moustache, uh, the discos and dancers playing Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, this is episode two of the campaign. Uh, we have two absences tonight, uh, but it's fine because Connor, who plays Bob, uh, Bob is just gonna float down river and mind his own. Well, he was he was already in the river. Fucking business. Yeah, he yeah. just kind of just didn't um, come back, and then I yeah. just went out to sea for a five. Hmm? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> I missed that. Um, and Fyra is just gonna try and get her grasp on the city and everything that's changed in the last 900 years because it's blown her mind out of her ass. She's very confused. Um, So a quick recap. Last week, uh, basically everyone was woken up from their 900-year coma by uh, Aerolith, just flopped out of his pocket in a pile. And he basically told them to go and, um, well, do what they did before in life. Just some... Basic mercenary work, some contract work, some um, bar backing for all you kids, just while he gets yeah. a bit of a understanding of what's going on and why the moon has returned. Um, the party decided to get some contracts, two of them to be exact, one for a beast <laughs> and one for the most generic man in existence, uh, and went to kill some sort of mutated axe beak like creature at a farm that was well they were basically indifferent to it they were like you know we've had worse than a, a bloody big bird but yeah. the, the city insisted on getting taken out so they earned a bit of gold for that and they <laughs> retired to kind of nearly killed uh fire yeah yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was a nasty critical hit to start the campaign with i'll tell you that much yeah. jesus one more hit point if that eldritch blast you did did one more hit point she'd have been dead off yeah the bat. i know i know <laughs> <laughs> Nasty. But yeah, so the party retired back to the Headless Hydra. Um, who I need to actually get the NPC name of the guy who runs it, because I bloody forgot. Uh, there we go. Francis Calpurnis. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> we, uh, we didn't ask Pernis. his name last time. All right, well, now you know. You don't, but you do. Um, if you get me. I was, go- I was going to ask him, but I yeah. forgot. I can't even remember what he talked like. I should have marked it down. But wasn't he like Scott? Scott? Wasn't he like? Yeah, I think he was just deep Scottish, wasn't he? He was like, like a, a typical yeah. deep Scottish Scottish dwarf. Scottish. 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 Yeah, Scottish. Um, <laughs> so hey, I'm Scottish. <laughs> hey, it's me, your boy, the Scotsman. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it sounds. Yep. Sound like a like a New England rabbi. <laughs> <laughs> we yeah. don't give a bumpkiss. <laughs> anyway. Uh, <laughs> good way to start so yeah um, you finish with a long rest but during the night uh, Balthazar Ooh. you hear a voice oh. you can hear Balthazar Balthazar my love it's me it's Gwen Balthazar wake up do I see anything do I when I open my eyes do I see anything you feel like you're standing up Okay. in a dark room a bit like Errol it's little pocket alcoholics anonymous room we're all separate uh, though me yeah you're all in uh, separate bedrooms yeah, I, think I demanded having my own didn't, room oh, yeah. didn't oh, fire oh, asleep on the, on the floor of one of your <laughs> bedrooms um, my, my room oh your room oh, okay wow. but yeah, you are weird. alone at the moment okay and ahead of you you can see Gwen your wife she's standing under almost like a spotlight of moonlight it seems um do you want to describe gwen to people uh even if it's just pulled out of your ass <laughs> she's um human she's um actually about the same height as me so she's quite a quite a tall human i know i'm a tiefling which should be about the same as a human height anyway but you know she yeah she's She's as tall as me, and um, she's got braided, uh, sort of, uh, like, mousy brown hair, Mm. and uh, she always wears this um, green dress. Okay, so she is in that green dress currently. Are there any discerning features on her face at all? Um... Any no, fun really. teeth or like a, a no no she skin. yeah she's got she's got um, green eyes but she's got a, a scar um, on her arm from um, 
sparring with me actually <laughs> <laughs> wife beater yeah he's on the stella yeah um, <laughs> so she's standing in front of you and it seems like she's attempting to raise her arm towards you but it's very slow as though she's underwater okay um her eyes seem to not be as sparkly as you remember a little bit more gray around the edges okay the dress starts to become tattered and it's like flapping in a wind or as if it's floating underwater um but there is no water around you and her voice changes slightly and you hear a woman's voice still but it's a lot more of a whisper it's far different to her voice like it doesn't register as hers and she says you could have saved her you know but I suppose that's why I gave you the power but that power that I gave you has been sitting dormant for what 900 years where have you been Balthazar and then you wake up in a cold sweat. It's very sudden, bolt upright. Fire kind of stays on the floor. She's like, <laughs> to bed. <laughs> Passes back out. Classic fire. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You get back to sleep long enough for it to count as a long rest. But yeah. you, know, you, you wake up, Ooh. new day, fire's gone. She's just buggered off to do her own thing. Okay. You are now in your room alone, but you are awake. I summon the sword. Yep. Again, there's this searing burn in your arm. But it's slightly less than it was yesterday. Because, oh, uh, just so people at home know, uh, everyone leveled up after last session. The, the first eight levels are going to be pretty quick because it's basically them coming out of this coma, getting back to grips with their bodies and power mm. and stuff. So it hurts less. Okay. But there's still a shooting pain straight down like the central vein in your arm. Okay. Uh, feels not quite a burn, but almost as if a blade has been run down it. Mm. I would say like tattoo pain, but <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, you do you can summon the sword still with these. So I I press the flat of the blade to my head, mm -hmm. and I just I say, I'm on it, and and summon the sword and okay. fly back down. <laughs> <laughs> another hour please <laughs> alright um, you two uh, don't seem to have dreams or if you do they're not bad ones it was a easy enough sleep that night it's the first time you felt like even though you've been unconscious for 900 years this is the first actual sleep yeah, it was nice it was good comfy beds especially for the price it's like when you've had a long sleep, you get up in the morning, make yourself a cup of tea or whatever, and then you're like, go, <laughs> and then you've got to sit down and have a rest. <laughs> oh, you're knackered now. Yeah. So, so yeah, the bard's up. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Fiddle bard. not kill bard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's uh, playing away in the corner downstairs. It's, it's roughly, you know... 8, 9 a.m., sunrise, everyone's out, We're carrying on about their day, market is being set up. Uh, it's... You haven't, you don't actually know what day it is, necessarily. I have, mm. I annoyingly, I've written, like, alternate names for days, but I can't find it, so I think it's on my computer at home, so I'll, I'll find that. It's basically, like, a name of the god, of a god, and then moon. Cool. So, like, Thay's moon instead of Theus's moon, or, like, Elor's moon, or whatever, but it's... It, you don't know the equivalent of the day at the moment but o -o everyone is well i say sunrise i said sunrise it's not sunrise that's a lie there's no sun yeah <laughs> it's yeah. it's moonrise yeah. it's, yeah. Still it's dark. what would have been sunrise it's still dark as hell <laughs> but like twice as bad <laughs> so yeah yeah it's like day twenty six thousand. it's still dark <laughs> yeah like you wake <laughs> both up right you're like Oh, it must be like, you know, 4 a.m. It's like, no, it's 6 in the afternoon. <laughs> it's, it's getting dark anyway. Like, Shit. <laughs> but yeah, so it's it's dark break. Yep. Everyone's up. There's a, a general 
hum throughout the city. You know, people are active. There was no burnings this morning, luckily. Weirdly. Like, normally this would be the point where your nostrils are just filled with a dense, rotten smog. Yeah. That's just... Burnt hair. Yeah, burnt hair, burnt scales if it was a dragonborn. Nice. You know, burnt god knows what. But, you know, it seems fine. Like today, <laughs> there's no rotten smell. In fact, you even pick up like a hint of cooked meats from downstairs in the kitchen that are wafting up. So. I'm in. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> she was just like, mmm, bacon. <laughs> you so proper zoned out then. I'll immediately make my way downstairs and inquire about the, the nice meats I'm smelling. <laughs> Still in the buff. <laughs> immediately. <laughs> yeah. Don't even put my underwear on. <laughs> Nothing. All right. No, I do. I do put my clothes on. <laughs> I put all my armor on and then I go downstairs. Okay, so it takes you about, what was it, 10 minutes to don plate armor, I think? Um, so it takes you a little well chain armour so uh, I'm only wearing leather one. takes me less time <laughs> <laughs> I'm always in my gym suit <laughs> what? I don't know why this has turned into a race we're going to try <laughs> quick <laughs> got your bacon first <laughs> yeah so you all you know pick up your stuff for the day equip yourself put your armour on head downstairs there's a one or two other groggy patrons that were either stay in the night or were on some sort of night shift somewhere even though it's still night it's very confusing for night shift workers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. What do, what do you guys do? Okay. We still have that man to look for, don't we? So. Ugh. <laughs> Must refrain from shooting Bard in face. <laughs> I wonder if I can pass him off as a vampire. Aw, <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't be so mean. He's only having a go. <laughs> He's not even the bard, he's just some prick that picked up a loot. There's <laughs> just one in the corner. So anyway, here's Wonderwall. <laughs> now he needs to go. Yeah. <laughs> oh, now he's on the fiddle. Uh. <laughs> Who's leaving these instruments lying around? Fyra. <laughs> I, imagine, it, I imagine he's like dropping them like we drop our weapon. Yeah. <laughs> like finished with the... Like that one time Fyra pulled out like six. <laughs> Double Eventually started. Scimitar. It's been dropped, and a this, and a that, and a bow. It turned into a matrix sequence. Yeah, <laughs> or like Reaper reloading his yeah. guns. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, the the bard is just tinkering away. He's uh, paid by the hour, so he, he's just gonna keep going until he, his fingers bleed. <laughs> like he's making the most out of it. Barkeep. Hey, uh, can I help you, lad? Uh. How much for, and I sort of point over to someone else who's having a nice hearty yeah. breakfast. How much? It depends. Do you want a big plate or a bigger plate? Let's go for the bigger plate. Uh, that'll run you six copper. Hi. And he just whistles to the back and you can hear little shuffling feet in the, in the <laughs> kitchen. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> the little guy. <laughs> yeah. So this is just like little shuffling feet in the back and then you can hear fresh meat hitting a pan with a... It's like a meaty sizzle. Not meaty just because it's meat, but also just because of the sheer density of the meat. There's just yeah. so much. But yeah, the the pan's been heated for a little while, so it immediately lays off like a slightly different aroma where before it was bacon, now there's like a steak smell filling the, filling the room. So that was six, yeah? Yeah, six copper for a nice old plate of meat. Nice. Right. It's not the best quality meat you've ever seen or eaten in your life, but it'll do the trick. You know, they've got they it's, a bit it's, of seasoning. It's the it's the first meat I've had in 900, 900 years. <laughs> yeah. I'm like... I'm, you know, like when Goku and Vegeta like eat at the same time? It's like that. I am unaware of this. Oh. Yes. Uh. <laughs> no, well... Sorry! <laughs> I know what you mean. There's like... Two frames of animation. Two frames, right, yeah. In left hand, right hand, left hand, right. Yeah, I got all you. of that. Right, yeah. cool. Yeah, so that's you. Two frame. Two frame. Well, <laughs> they're still cooking yeah. at the moment. How is he doing this? Wait. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, are you two ordering any breakfast or drinks? In fact. Ale. Are you two Ale. ordering any breakfast or drink? Uh, I'll get, do you want the same as yesterday or do you want the slightly cheaper stuff? Um, the same. The same. Uh, uh, I'll tell you how much that runs as soon as I find the file. <laughs> there's so much shit to find 
<laughs> my god man. I like that he actually said that he's like I can't find the file <laughs> hold on he's just like rooting through a little filing cabinet I can't even remember no he's got a laptop <laughs> yes yeah um, what am I even looking for icons and goods there we go oh, substances and alcoholic drinks N- note the substance bit um, okay brown ale that'll run you eight copper for the big mug <sighs> Oof. it's more expensive than the meat but it's far better quality than the meat I'll tell you that much can I get anything for you two then um, what, like... S- Do you need another mug of water? Uh, yeah, please. All right. And what kind of, like, small breakfast do you have? Like... We could cook you a couple of sausages. No, maybe something like... Mushroom stew. Then that sounds nice. One bowl of mushroom stew then? Mm-hmm. And you? Uh... What's the D&D equivalent for, like, a bacon sarni? Bacon sarni? Yeah? No, bacon sarni. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> it's literally just bread and pig. I was going to say... It's pretty rudimentary. Like, <laughs> you may not it doesn't butter, require but... modern technology. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Um, one bacon sandwich, then. And it, he just writes it down on a little thing and slips it over the top of the, the bar and that, that little hand come up and <laughs> take it off. And he just pours you your, uh, your drinks because they're only, like, kind of jugs at the back. And, uh, if there's just a guy crawling the around behind the bar messing with us <laughs> he's, just a, he's actually a goliath yeah. with tiny little piddle arms <laughs> but yeah um, so he passes the thing out to the back and he, you can see him pouring the ale again and he like puts it up on top he just pours out a little glass of um, water and you can hear more bacon hit the pan um, and then as the bacon hits the pan you can just hear kind of a bit of clanging, some wooden bowls being knocked about, and then a little bowl of mushroom stew comes up on top, <laughs> <laughs> and he just he hands it over to you. Oh, I didn't say bowls. Bowl. I said bowls. Bowls of soup. Uh, no, I thought you said bowls being knocked about, and I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's when the cook gets things wrong. <laughs> 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 um, yeah. <laughs> Awful for dinner. Uh, <laughs> yeah. He um, passes you the bowl and he goes, uh, that'll run you two copper and uh, the water is on the house. And Oh, thanks. That, the, the bacon sandwich will be about... Oh, wait, hang on. And he turns two to the back copper. and he goes, is it three or four? And from the back you can hear, four. Tantum. Uh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that'll run you four. The price list is very sporadic. <laughs> Do you need help? <laughs> yeah. What? He's I was just going to go like, I forgot how to spend my money again. Okay. Right. Go down. So click on on the money there, and then just put in the amount that you want to remove. And click and remove. Then. Cool. Thank yep. you. There we go. Thank Can you. I get you a drink to wash down that bacon sandwich when it comes? Tea. Please. What kind of establishment do you think we are? Thanks for the oh, subscription, by the way. Oh, bacon sarni. Like I said, bread and meat is pretty rudimentary. Tea, on the other hand, that shit's expensive. Oh, I'm going to be honest, I forgot my accent. <laughs> so I'll just have water. Russian. <laughs> water. All right, water. And he pours you another water and he goes, I hope you all uh, had a comfortable sleep. Is there anything wrong in your rooms at all? That anything needs fixing? Uh, I don't think so. It's a little bit drafty. Uh, I'm afraid that's the best we've got. Oh. Yeah. Can you just like stick some stuff in the windows or something, just to you know? I mean, I can try like and put some, some tar or something. Just <laughs> ran <laughs> right in tar. there. Tar, yeah, tar. <laughs> you know the stuff. I mean, just I, I'll, black I can stuff. stick it in the wall. You know, I'll, I'll give it a whirl. No promises or anything. Draft or draft, you know. Yeah, I guess. Okay, that's it. Right, Thanks, I, uh, I've got some things to get on with. Uh, when, when your food's ready, I'll bring it to you. So if you'd like to take a seat, it shouldn't be long. And he just dips off and he starts. Like, I've got my ale at this point, though, haven't I? Yeah, What's yeah. his name, Keith? No. Keith. Keith. Keith Francis, <laughs> isn't it? Keith Francis. 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 Yeah, yeah, Francis Calpurnus. Calpurnus. Purnus. Yeah. Cal- it's the... No, I don't, it's, I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's not like, a very dwarf. It's the Cal- Cal- Keith, Keith, if you want. Uh, okay. Francis. I can't even think that was a headless eyes or a Kindle Ward. Yeah, see. Couldn't remember which part of the city you're in. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> shit. <laughs> okay, so um, after a few more minutes of just the, the meat cooking, 
he brings them over, gives you your bacon sandwich, you've already got your mushroom stew, and he just slaps his plate down. And it's just this big, thick steak with like three sausages and two rashes of bacon like wrapped over the top. So it's uh, for the price, it was quite a hefty bit of meat. Mm. Bit tough. Um, cooked quite well for the grade of meat. Mm. Um, it's not like an old boot or anything. It's you know still a bit pink mm. in the middle. A uh, little bit of seasoning, bit of peppercorns on top. Lovely, jubbly. So uh, goes down a treat. N- no poison here. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's actually not to worry about it. If you don't okay. mind me, and I just you know again go into the two frame <laughs> animation. <laughs> two frame animation. Yeah. Cool. Well, Chris move left. <laughs> Yeah, do it more. Sorry. All right, so you finish up your breakfast pretty quickly, uh, uncomfortably quickly for you. May even give you a bit of heartburn. Yeah. Um, I need to behave myself. <laughs> yeah, you've got pretty much the whole day ahead of you. It's you know, about half past nine at this point, from what you can guess with um, what time business is opened. Again, you can't judge by the position of the sun, and unless you've got an actual mage to tell you the time. Yeah. Or you've got the feet, because that's the thing. Um, yeah, keen mind. Yeah, it? Like that. yeah. Good luck figuring out the time. Okay. Do they? Okay. Okay. Where is like? Was near to us, like outside the village, like outside the city entirely, or yeah. just in this little ward of the city? No, like outside the city. Outside the city is actually relatively barren. Um, there's some major trade routes going uh, down to the coast where you guys headed out like out from with um captain fate um there's basically just attempts at farming fields because the like the dirt quality isn't great it's very sandy it's very dry but there's hang on i'll get a map up because our contact for that man man for that man for that man like it didn't say a location or anything, did it? Not like uh, this man is in. This man is here. Go get <laughs> yeah. him. I mean, like Wasn't a it last just, like, scene in town. Yeah, basically, oh, it was just okay. like criminal in Charpire, mm-hmm. bounty on his bonds, six gold so alive, three out. gold dead. I probably kicked you guys. Any ideas for finding that uh, tattooed gentleman? Mm, I don't know. Also, to add to you a thing. Um, across the major part of the river because where um, Charpire is there's kind of a, a channel that they've dug specifically for small boats to ferry things in and out of the city but there's like a major river section where a few rivers meet in almost like a whirl not a whirlpool but like a quite a rapids filled lake then um, but north east of you there's a place called Wyvern Hollow which is a town that at least um, Gert would know of. Actually, Gert and um, Char would know of. Uh, to your like north northwest uh, is a place called Fallglome Thicket, which is a um, primarily elven. Um, the flute don't know. Thing. <laughs> yeah, some prick is in the back and has picked up some wooded wooded instrument. When he starts playing the other instrument. I actually stop. <laughs> just like look across the room at him. So. <laughs> you just. It plays one really sharp note as so like a whoop, <laughs> carries on, turns around and whoop. But yeah, most of the most of this area is relatively barren. There's a little uh, across the river. I didn't mention there's a um, almost like an outpost just to protect from the south because there's a, a small mountain range that runs uh, east of the city, and there's often basically there's like one path up through to Charpire. it's kind of like the one main road so it's quite well protected but um you guys know of the other bastion that was savaged by orcs hundreds of years ago might be rebuilt by now who knows bob will know um he's been down that way but yeah other than that there's piss all outside this city it's just like hillocks and farms if you can even call them that okay I All just, the good shit yeah. is like a cross on Volkruth. I just couldn't remember if the guy was like in the town or not. Oh, also, sorry. Directly north of Wyvern Hollow, uh, you, uh, Gert would definitely know this because she's been positioned there before, is the biggest city in this uh, region of the world called Greyfall, where actually the king was executed all those years ago to call it Gutsplit. 
Right. And this is like that's the the real big city because this is a big enough city with enough people and places. What's it called? Greyfall. And there's like a proper farming settlement just outside called Fleuro. Oh, hang on. You can't really get away with them. <laughs> a lot of these um loot songs you can kind of get away with copyright, but when it's as obvious as the the Witcher one, like, yeah, yeah. it's like, oh. <laughs> yes. But yeah, so you you would know vaguely the geography of the city, and both of you between you would know the geography of the land. You, however, wouldn't know much about this area. Of the yeah, world. I'm not even from this part of the world. No, you're on a completely different continent on the opposite side of the world. Well, I say opposite side. Basically, you're dead center of the world, slightly north at the yeah. moment. Um, you're on a continent called Midran. Yeah. But you come from the um, Blasted Continent, mm. which is Blastfall and Blastloom, mm. and you're from Blastfall? Yeah. Yes. So that's a much more borderline tribal place yeah. where there's a lot of small settlements where people keep to themselves, and it's very dry, very um, almost like savanna grassland type place so mm. this is a bit alien to you being in such a built up city yeah <laughs> especially the way you arrived all those years ago where you were just yeeted into a room yeah in a sack <laughs> literally <laughs> with the worst bugle player <laughs> announcing your arrival I like that I got an announcement though <laughs> even if it was the shittest announcement <laughs> this side of the millennium okay um Any ideas on this? Uh... Well, he's got to be some low life guy, right? So maybe he's got to be. Given this city's history? Uh, yeah, I guess. Uh, I don't know. Maybe like blocking all the taverns first. I don't really know how we're going to find this guy because if, 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 if this guy is trying to hide out and he sees us going around looking at everyone's necks. <laughs> for for a tattoo, he's gonna know something. He's gonna slip out, and we're never getting. And you know, you could actually just cover his neck up. Or that. I don't know. I got nothing. <laughs> Maybe we just ask around a little bit more. I think that um, there's a lot of people on his side. Maybe. It's like, like saying we killed them all. <laughs> <laughs> yes. They're in a hobo rampage! <laughs> Do, does it even say on the paper thingy what he's wanted for? Well. Um, it doesn't <laughs> Mr. specify. Mr. Voice from the Sky. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, the, it's one of the most generic, poorly designed wanted posters you've ever seen in your life. Apart from the fact it looks like it was drawn by an infant with like six thumbs mm. um, being <laughs> the most generic looking block you've ever seen um, it just says wanted for crime do you think it could be fake mm. the um, bartender catches like well as one of, you, one of you brought out the thing to look at at all uh, well the bartender has seen it because we showed him last time yeah oh yeah true He'll probably oh. overhear us I forgot that. Well. Oh, I thought you like thought you belched. No, I went. No, I went. Oh, I squeezed the can. He went. Oh. Um, but yeah, I, I totally forgot that he spotted it. Sorry. <laughs> Running two campaigns in the same world is tough. <laughs> mm. I should have just done a pre-made one with the other group. Hundred <laughs> percent. It's a bit late now. Oh well. Um, Barkeep. Yeah, so. Hey. Uh, any any news on on our on our friend that we're looking for uh you know what hold on let me get up the the name of him again get, pass it here pass it here uh, he takes it and he just puts it over the shelf and he goes he just whistles <laughs> little hands come up and you can hear it and he <laughs> just puts it back up and then a little note comes up afterwards <laughs> <laughs> and um the guy uh, uh what's his name francis looks at it and he goes Thank you. Uh, Barnabas here reckons that um, this man you're looking for, his name is Tomac. That's all he says, though. 
So how come you didn't know that yesterday? No, I didn't. I didn't Wait. show him yesterday. Huh? I didn't ask Barnabas yesterday. I don't know this. It's written on paper. Look, and he just holds up the little note, like scrolled in massive, really spidery writing, basically in crayon, but <laughs> well, like basic graphite from the back room. Yeah. Tomek. Tomek. Uh, oh. Like Thomas with a K. Tomek. It's a bit different. It's like Polish name for Thomas. With the as S well. as well. So it'd be like Thomas. <laughs> no, with a K instead of the S. You didn't say the S, you said the H. <laughs> so without the H, with, with a K. It's like Thomas with a K. K. <laughs> without the H. Fuck you, know. <laughs> 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 And he um, just goes, is that all you've got? And then you could just show him the back. Eh. Uh, that's all he's got. Well, oh. thanks. That's. Uh, I hope it puts you in the right direction, at least, so you can ask around a bit. Yeah. Yeah, we'll uh Well, I hope you find him. Because, uh, wait, what, what's he? And he looks down and he goes, wanted for crime. Who the fuck wrote this? <laughs> what, what crime? Did he, like, tickle someone inappropriately or murder three people? Well, <laughs> given this... Uh, he just puts it back over to you and he's like... This city, man, it's a shambles. Yeah. I say we bring back the days where we burn people more. Is tickling uh, yeah. Maybe not. <laughs> I mean, it was effective. Maybe not quite like what it was real back in the day where everyone got burnt. But I mean, we've really eased up on the burnings and a lot of people are getting away with stuff now. Hmm. She knows what I mean. Why <laughs> she is points at your hair. Why is tickling a crime? Inappropriately being tickled. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Okay. Go and tickle someone in Cardiff and see how we get don't, to. Don't tickle anyone. <laughs> okay. And he goes, what if they like it? <laughs> what if they run up an ass to be if, tickled? <laughs> if there's consensual tickling. <laughs> consensual tickling. I'm fine with that. I do, and I just walk out. <laughs> just <laughs> leave the room. Right, bye. I hope you enjoy breakfast. I'm almost like... I'm a vampire hunter. What am I doing? <laughs> okay, so should we just go and follow Bazaar? Because I think he knows where he's going. I don't know. It's he... Balthazar. It's Bazaar! <laughs> and I just run out after him. nasally that goes. <laughs> oh, yeah, right, I'll, fo I'll follow. <laughs> <laughs> Good, Bouvier. Yeah. yeah. Where are you going? That was really bad. Uh... <gasps> Move the camera. We just need to Sorry. find someone who knows who Tomac is. Yeah, but I'm going to start at this other bar. Okay. Oh, so you're going to go up the street to the... Um, hold on. Sorry. It's very hard to go running between like Wait, six Wait, I got ladies. it. Evergleam? Evergleam in. That's it. Yep. You got it. I took notes. That's what I said. <laughs> yeah, you and notes are better than my own. Like, mine are all there. It's just I have to cycle between, like, eight different bloody word documents. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, they have a gleam in. Your braces jingled it. Here's my watch. Oh. Money. Sick. Flex. <laughs> <laughs> you get burgled now like Kimmy K. Huh? Get burgled now like Kimmy K. Kimmy K. <laughs> <laughs> Kimmy K. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. Um. So, yeah, you head to the have gleam in. Uh, this place is very ironically named... Oh. This place hasn't gleamed in a long time. It's grimy. It's dirty. Your feet immediately start sticking to the floor. <laughs> nice. Like, yeah. And there's just this odd piss-like smell. Is it piss? Maybe. <laughs> it's like so <laughs> watered down with the smell of alcohol that it... You know, just like the local pub bogs. Yeah. Yeah. No. And it just smells like this. Very ironic. As soon as I walk in, I can feel my feet sticking to the floor. I just go, oh my gosh, Francis can just come down here and pick the stuff up off the floor and shove it in the windows. Brilliant. <laughs> I just wonder where the hell you're going with that. The I'm so glad you went that way. Oh my god. <laughs> I don't think that would do much for the smell there, though. Yeah, but these two won't be drafty. I don't like You'd being rather in the be draft. Warm and smelly. Yeah. Who would want to be warm and smelly? Who are these people? Come on. Have you ever been in a nice warm room to sleep in and then the next morning you get up and you're fresh? They don't happen. I rarely get a nice warm room. 
Well, that's where you're going wrong. It's amazing. Barkeep. At this moment, a, a very <laughs> that needs to be like large, um, yeah. kind of pot-bellied man with a, a jutting jaw, pig-like nose, balding severely on top, with like a grease stain just next to his lip and like drop down onto his shirt. Turns around and he's like cleaning out a um, a mug with a like a brown rag. The the rag wasn't brown to begin with, and he spits in the cup and like cleans it. And he goes, uh, "How can I help you?" <laughs> uh, do you know a man uh, a man named Tomac? Tomac? It's a pretty fucking common name, isn't it? It's part of the world. I don't fucking know. Uh, Anything more specific? Uh. <laughs> Got a tattoo on his neck. Of a snake. Snake tattoo, eh? And he just goes... <laughs> spits in the cup oh, that's and disgusting. starts like, cleaning oh. it again. I'm going... <laughs> no. Leaves. No dragon. He goes... I don't know about no snake tattoo, but I do know a man <laughs> with a tattoo of an elephant on his cock. That, that would be mighty helpful. Thank you. It could be him. The drawing so was that bad. <laughs> <laughs> Can I interest you in anything? Yeah, I want to know more about that tattoo. The, you, you the, know, the, the, the well, elephant, the elephant one. top man. I, yeah, I. Is is the trunk incorporated in, or was it already there? I'm waiting Ironically, outside. Ironically, it's more like uh, the elephant's just kind of standing next to his bollocks. All oh, right. Okay. That's a bit weird. He thought of the trunk idea seems after like, he'd already had it. Seems like a bit of a waste of opportunity, but... That's what I said. And he pulls up another glass and just, like, spits in it again and starts cleaning it. Have you seen it? I have not seen it, but I've heard of it. He comes in maybe once a fortnight, works over this part of the city sometimes. Right, I'm, just, I'm, I'm just stood outside. I'm struggling to keep this <laughs> I'm just stood outside leaning against the door because, like. <laughs> nope. Just, just as soon as, like. Nope. Uh, yeah, you've gone in and you've realized this one patron who's kind of just slun- slunched. That was slouched and hunched. Slunched, slunched? against, um, like, Slunk. a. You know, like, we're in a corner, there's often a, um, like, a bench that goes around. Well, he's leaning right up against the corner and he's like dribbling and passed out basically. He's been there all night. It's very obvious and he stinks. Like you what, can smell him from the 10 the, yards. Did anybody catch the ball keeper's name? Or the ball, the ball keeper? keeper. <laughs> the ball keeper. Uh, I don't, I, nobody, I, nobody asked him, did they? Because I just got Minga Ball D down. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm putting that in as well. Yeah, I'm Minga Ball D. We don't want to know your name now. Right. <laughs> I need to write it down anyway. You're not even going to ask in character, it's just like, no. Is that a <laughs> subsection area of Garibaldi? Yeah. I thought so. <laughs> <laughs> what a weird fucking Pokemon evolution. <laughs> right, there we go. I just need to make a, a conscious effort to every time an NPC comes up, mark their fucking name down and where I found them. <laughs> right. Um, where I, you found them. Can you, can you, like, say it as well? Because we're really bad at asking. Just be like, hi. Uh, his name is Vincent Hill. <laughs> Vincent. You don't look like a Vincent. You don't. I'm calling him Vincey Wincy. <laughs> Spider. <laughs> Nothing Wincy <laughs> about him, boy. Okay. What? Maybe it's going to be Hilly Willy Spider. <laughs> <laughs> You're right for the test. You look very <laughs> lost in thought. You're like. I'm trying to think of what he would sound. What, what his name would be. <laughs> it's Vince. The it's Russian. Vince. Huh? In the Russian accent. No. Oh. Uh, I've, I've given up with Russian. I, I don't know, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know my answer. I literally just anymore. told you the name. <laughs> no, I'm trying to think of what he would look like in my head. Because he doesn't oh. look like Vincent. Fat, bald, pig nose, jutting jaw, big, thick, bushy eyebrows, balding on top, <laughs> greasy thing. Jerry. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Vincent, Vincent, Jerry's Vince Jerry's to his there. friends. Yeah, sorry, Jerry's. <laughs> just think disgusting old, like, Cockney barman. Disgusting. Vince. You're right. <laughs> Danny Dyer. <laughs> Occasionally we'll call you boss and or geezer. <laughs> you, you guys going to ask anything? Because I'm like, I am standing outside. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, 
We were, we were yeah, just, just in the ghost bar. in the elephant He's costume. just like <laughs> spitting in cups and rinsing them. Rinsing. <laughs> Rinsey vincy. I think yeah. it's time to go. Mm-hmm. Okay. Thank you for... Yeah. You did that. Yeah, and next go. time we're in here, because I'm sure we'll be in here again, if there's any more stories about like weird tattoos, I'd like to hear about them. And then you can see him in thought for a bit, and he goes, I know a man who had a tattoo of an eyeball over his eyelids, so when he's asleep, he looks like he's awake. That's really cool. That's, it's fucking that's, weird when he passes out, though. But it's ingenious, because then, you know... You, you, the ironic you, thing you is, his eyes are blue and the tattoo's brown. Oh. Yeah. Maybe not so good. No. Okay. Okay, bye. As you're leaving, you can just have one massive, like, f- retchy phlegm. <laughs> I'm not going to do the noise because Jess will literally kill me. I, li- I will literally leave. Like, I can't <laughs> go for this. So, oh. Bye. The moment you go back outside, you, re- you remember back to the days of the burnings and you think, God, that place smelled way worse than the burning. Because <laughs> you kind of get back out into fresh air and it kind of cleanses your palate a little. So uh, that's an interesting one. Oh my god, you do write with a page perfectly perpendicular to you. Yeah, yeah. It's, that's it's weird. insane. I write at like Laura a 30 degree. Downwards. Yeah, I write like a 30 degree angle, but that's batshit. Yeah. <laughs> Don't I write your hand? No. Like Aker. No, I can't think. It's fine. <laughs> so yeah, you know of a man named Tomac with an elephant next to his bollocks, but you're not sure if it's the right guy. Oh. Okay. Because uh, this part of the world, <laughs> specifically Charpaya, is very um, Eastern European influenced. Right. Uh, in terms, a lot of, for the most part, there it's now more multicultural. But back in your day, it would have been a lot more Sergeys and Borises and mm. Romanov and Alexeyov and other of mm. names. I kind of lucky you both and go well. There is only one way to find out. He has neck tattoo. We ask him to drop his trousers. I'm fine with this. Assuming Tom yeah. attractive. Are you seeing not... this in the bar, or have you come outside? No, I'm it? outside. <laughs> she wouldn't Wait. say this in the bar. <laughs> Why? How crude! <laughs> oh no! She Why are we she's asking people to the drop street. their trousers? Oh no, we don't even know if that's him. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> she wants to see cock. <laughs> I just realised that that's not actually like we'd had no yeah. confirmation that no. that's the guy. No, not at all. It's just some random dude named Tomac with an elephant next to his bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> well, I for one am interested to see if it's the same guy. So he needs to drop his trousers. I'm gonna poke my so head in again and take another yeah. look at the passed out drunk guy. The moment you put your head in, it's just that really nasty whiff hits you again. You're just gonna go over and like study him or are you just gonna look from yeah I'll just, I'll just all right so you just wander over the, the barkeep looks up and he's just like um, do you do you know this uh gentleman oh yeah that's old james he's in here all the fucking time is that the guy with the tattoo on uh, eyes no no okay it's not yeah he's not a tattoo man he hasn't actually got tattoos from what you can see he's just some old from what we can human see human man Mottled hair, like dribble and beer in his beard and mm. minging, okay. covered in grime. He's as much stuck to the seat as your feet are to the floor. <laughs> oh, it's like, every time he sits up, it goes like, <laughs> as it peels away. I'll, uh, <laughs> although the name doesn't <laughs> match, disgusted. I'll still try to check his neck. I feel like I'm right, he just kind of like stares and goes, <laughs> <laughs> but there's nothing there. Okay. Drunk I come back outside. Again, the oh, fresh air hits uh, you, and it's like that's it's not like him. ecstasy. No, good because I don't know how he would get him. To Can we just draw a tattoo on someone? No, <laughs> find the most generic man, sharpie it on. <laughs> that's cheating. We Fantasy need to sharpie. find. We could burn Tom it into him. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. This is not a good idea, guys. <laughs> really. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I love how, like, <laughs> me and Chris are, like, going off track. And I was like, bring it back in. <laughs> I mean, someone's got her. Um, where else? Oh. Watch it, my teeth. I mean, 
we someone's gotta know this guy. I just don't know where we should go. But I think we just need to go exploring around. Just ask everyone. But even if they did know him, would they tell us? That's true. I guess if they're friends, they're not gonna say. Hmm. Can we go back? Oh no, the the person who we got the um, job from didn't have a clue what they looked like either, did they? We asked them. Yeah. Do, does it like have any indication of how long the post has been out? No, but um, you can assume from the the fact that when you inquired yesterday, they were just given to you there and then that considering no one else had taken the the bird thing either that they're recent enough that yeah either there's a f maybe a few other people out there looking for him but you know they unless he was caught last night he's still out there oh i was just thinking like because if it was like a few months old oh no it's it's new enough that they're still handing it out like okay. at the same time as ones that were literally posted this week like that big bird creature so mm. um I mean, I'm guessing this guy probably knows he's done something bad, right? So he's probably hiding somewhere. We're not going to find him walking around. Mm. I just don't know where he's at. The bard's got an accordion now. Hold on. <laughs> he's just following you through the street. <laughs> oh my god, kill him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we can just go door to door. An ass. <laughs> door to door. <laughs> isn't <laughs> this like? Isn't there thousands of people in this city? Yes. Yeah. Oh, it's even busier now than it used to be. But let's not do that. Yeah, let's not go do it. Maybe they should bring back the burning. It'd be less people to go through. <laughs> <laughs> There's just a voice of a dwarf in your head going, "I told you." <laughs> uh. It doesn't like a tone. Unless you want to just, I don't know, keep it on the back burner and go somewhere else. And just, you know, explore a bit. Because, uh. you know, it's still dark. We need to get this sun up somehow. I don't think this guy with the this, this snake tattoo on his neck is our biggest priority right now. Maybe if we just go around and look at more stuff. We find him anyway on the way to other places. Lead the way. Okay. And I just walk <laughs> north. And north? Just, okay, cool. Yeah. Um, that actually helps a lot. Uh, oh, that's the wrong map. Tip. Hold on. Okay, so north through the Kindle board. That will be heading towards the Duskwatch and the Temple Quarter zones. Um, is there anything in particular you're looking for, kind of like out along the way, like any particular vendors or shops or like smithies, taverns, post offices? Uh, post offices would be good. Mm. Okay. Um, Why? There's also libraries and banks. Just it. Oh, and a brothel. Oh, okay. But that's on a different part of the city. Um, brothel. Okay, so. How in the truth? Right. Um, first of all, the, you would know that the the major post office uh, was used to be privately owned in the fancy part of the city. However, I need you to make a history check for me, please. You said that we were passing libraries as well. Or yeah, there's a bunch of stuff along the way. Okay. Um, I'll, um, there's one in the temple quarter, so up on the mound. I'll pop in there. Mm. Nine. Nine? Okay. Um, from that, you vaguely remember back in the day, there was a budding crime ring uh, within the city that um, was supposedly run by some of the earlier, um, like the earliest integrated orcs and goblins that was supposedly something to do with post or moving items at least but would that have been after we disappeared 
it would have been budding around the time of you all being in Charfire. I'm just wondering how Char feels about integrated orcs, that's all. <laughs> yeah, that the orcs had the orcs and the goblins had started to kind of become civilized for about a century before. But were mostly in small villages, mm. uh, fringe settlements where there was very few people, or even the ones that were there were weak or sparse enough that the orcs could kind of just, you know, tag on the end without anyone notice or mm. threaten the ones that tried to get them out. Just for the record, I notice. <laughs> but over that century, more and more had started like creeping into cities. First of all, they were lynched, literally mm. outright beaten in the streets. Especially goblins, because um, more people are afraid of orcs than goblins. Yeah. So the goblins, they would just kick around like footballs. Um, but at the time of you guys being frozen in time, there was enough that if you saw one on the street, unless you're a psychopathic orc murderer, like this one, yeah. um, you wouldn't really bat too much of an eyelid. You may kind of cross the other side of the street, or you may turn your nose at them depending on what kind of person you are but yeah you do remember vaguely that apparently there was like a, a family of goblins that had started to take hold within the city some way in terms of delivering goods so, so, post. Okay. so is this post office now still run by them is that where this whole thing is about well like i didn't the, catch what you said first Basically, there is one back in the day that uh, was called the Good Deacon's Delivery, which was over in Deacon's Bridge, and it was like a privately owned uh, posh person's post office. Because a lot of like postal stuff was handled by the banks or private couriers, but th they were the first kind of um, founded, dedicated post office in the city. It's just you had to get into Deacon's Bridge. It's not too bad anymore in terms of getting there, because a lot of the city guard have relaxed on... Um, you know, people moving freely between the city zones. But um, the private guards there used to be very funny about you approaching properties. Mm. Um, at least that's what you remember from the history check. But whether it's still there or not, whether there's one somewhere else, or whether this, you know, secret goblin post office is lurking somewhere, but okay. you don't know much about it. Um, we could go find the post office. Okay. If, if, in eye shot, if I can see a library, I just want to quickly okay, pop Okay, from where you are, you know that there's one up on the mound. Mm. Um, but, uh, Gert would know that there is one nearby this other... Um, post office over in Deacon's Bridge. It's the Charpire City Library. It's like the the main one that is open access to the public. What Not I... necessarily the best one in terms mm. of rarities, but the most you know used place. No, Do you know of any oh. libraries about? Yeah, there's just one over here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, over what here. Were you, what were you gonna say, Jess? No, I was just gonna say. Um, do you know, like as you said, there were vendors and stuff around. Mm -hmm. Would I be able to get any arrows anyway? Um, you could check the smithies. The you know, you can keep an eye out on the street just in case someone's trying to peddle weapons, but you can check the local smithies. Or dedicated fletchers, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Is that, a, is that a thing? For all weapon needs, we'll assume there's a smith. Okay. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Nice oh, idea. actually, um, in most of the major cities, there's also a, uh, like a, not just like a vendor's hall, but like an artisan's hall, mm. where there'll be like jewel crafters, enchanters, woodworkers... Um, basically, Chris, you know, <laughs> and Jess, I don't know if Laura's played it. You know, in Elder Scrolls Online, mm. where there's like uh, just the condensed little zones where yeah. there's all the, the woodworking tables and stuff. It's that, but most of them are in kind of open sided, sheltered buildings mm. for the most part. Yeah. So, cool. well, me and Laura used to trade stuff back oh, and forth to, to get the extra XP. XP, that's what <laughs> me and my brother did. <laughs> I want to boost my woodworking. Swap, swap. Swap, so you swap. you both make lots of wood stuff and then swap Tra it so then you can deconstruct yeah. it. <laughs> Stupid one. But yeah, um, 
so the most cities will have you'd know this again because you, you're quite fluent with the area itself because even though you didn't spend a lot of time in Charpaya, you spent a lot of time in Greyfall um, mm. and the surrounding areas and you did a lot of routine marches through this zone so you'd know of the guild hall Fyra would know but she's pissed off somewhere she's figuring out her head from her ass in the city so <laughs> she's in the brothel. Char wouldn't know much about the inside of the city but you'd know a lot about the surrounding regions you know a lot about gut split and like the the south of Skald and the north of Windspine that's right um, <laughs> I know my own map what do you mean <laughs> uh, so you know a lot of that particular region of the world but not so much the cities more the wildlife and the mountains and the you know flora fauna and all the gubbins in between okay i really want arrows though all right i mean you can communicate there so you can, so you can figure out where to buy them or you could just go out in the woods and make your own <laughs> i will be three hours like i'm not being funny i couldn't even i'm so clumsy in real life i couldn't even pretend like in a character that i could <laughs> do that <laughs> What do you want to go to the library for? Uh, a little catching up. That's just, that makes it sound real suspicious. You need to tell me. A little and catching up. Off. Like, <laughs> that, don't That's just what... walk away from me. <laughs> I'm asking you a question. What are you doing? I like I, you basically yeah. married a couple in the game yeah. as well. <laughs> 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 what were you gonna say, Jess? No, I I just like c- call after you and just be like, I'll catch up. But I'm just gonna go and see if I can find a vendor with some arrows or something. Okay. Um, actually, I just wander off towards the post office. <laughs> oh, we both split up. Yeah. Rule number one: Don't split the party. What do we do? Split the party. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, from where you are? Oh, wait, you're in the Kindle Ward. Ah, yeah. Um. No, no, you're not. Wait, here you are. I named all these zones themed around like fire and hearth and ember and kindle, and it's very confusing. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of shot myself in the foot with that. Yes, you are in the kindle ward, and within the kindle ward, actually nearby, there is um, a blacksmith that you'd be able to kind of hear the general ting, ting of and see the smoke rising above because there's very little amounts of smoke anymore. Minds of Avarice. Two worlds, two. What a game. Um, but yeah, so you you can kind of make out from where you are easily enough, like without even a perception check. Like passively, you'll just instinctively hear that ting cutting through the din of the crowd. So you can head that way if you wish. You are heading to the Deacon's Bridge. Are you heading to the Deacon's Bridge with her to that particular library? Or you I just walked the off and then waited for her to catch up and then carried right, on okay. walking with her. Okay, so you two are heading <laughs> over to Deacon's Bridge. So we'll uh, address the uh, like blacksmiths first because it's closer. Oh, so as you approach, <laughs> there's a... Um, I didn't want to do a scene. <laughs> there's uh, like a sign that says Baylog's Anvil. And... The forge is an open kind of outdoor area with two large anvils in the center. Uh, One a lot more rigid looking than the other. One of them almost, it kind of looks decorative because it's like a far shinier, smaller anvil. What? No, I I was like thinking in my head how to say like I would like to buy some arrows. But then (laughs) like in, then Pink Panther. (laughs) Pink Panther came into my head. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Just uh, Jesus. okay so yeah you get to the um the blacksmiths easy enough and um there's a a burly oh, almost half giant looking man not quite goliath or traditional goliath with your kind of woad tattoo looking things but a very tall man basically looks like um fuck, what's his name from game of thrones tormund Mm. big thick ginger beard but he's got long ginger braids which one of you cowards shit in my pants <laughs> that guy yeah he's best he, line in game yeah, of thrones he's very big and he's the hammer he's using is absurd like he's just moving so much metal with every blow that he doesn't you would never need a power hammer in modern day you would just smush the metal with his hammer he's a fucking beast and he's got 
a, basically like a tattered tunic that's barely clinging on to him but it's just because you can tell he saw one he's sweating and the the glow of the like the forge is very ambient in the darkness it's quite obvious the moment you turn the corner and see it down the street so he's just smacking away fought in some sort of blade or axe head or whatever okay can i just have some arrows that's <laughs> <laughs> literally all i want <laughs> okay i i like a- approach you and kind of be like to get your attention he's so in his work he's just ting ting just oh, smacking am away am i gonna have to shout you may have to say something or you like poke him <laughs> It's okay. been comes with the hammer, it's the kill. <laughs> Hello. That was my accent. <laughs> Hello. Else. You gave me quite a fright. Hello. Can I help you? Um I I I just want some arrows. <laughs> arrows! I tend not to deal in arrows. I'm more of a man of steel Well, then myself. you're wasting my time. Wait, I'm no, sorry. Oh, I, I have information. <laughs> I was going to offer... <laughs> I know over in the... The, uh, the artisan's area in the Deacon's Bridge, there's, you know, people, woodworkers, Fletchers. I'm sure they can offer you something. Okay. Sorry. Is there anything else I can interest you in? It's just the, the voice in the sky told me to come here. <laughs> the voice in the sky it's a long story so where do I go he kind of looks at the sky and he goes did you just break the fourth wall in I don't D&D? hear anything <laughs> dun 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 <laughs> Deadpool's it just looks yeah. dead at the camera <laughs> nobody goes I don't hear anything lady where do I go Deacon's Bridge oh, where are the others are going anyway yeah. okay you know you would be very useful as a forge assistant with a head like yours you know on fire and everything No thanks. Well, there's always a job for you. Have a good day now. And he just picks up an even bigger hammer and he goes, I have work to do. And he just goes, bang! And basically, like this... Sparks. Yeah, <laughs> just sprays everywhere. And he's even flexed the blade, so it's like white hot blade. And he's just, bang! Shifting so much metal. Okay, thanks for beast. nothing. <laughs> Goodbye. He can't hear you. He's like, Tick! Plus the, the forge fire is pretty loud. Whatever. <laughs> like if he tells you exactly where to go and you're like fuck you you didn't help <laughs> you didn't help me directly you helped me indirectly <laughs> that's the worst kind of help damn it <laughs> that's worse than not helping <laughs> I'd rather have figured it out on my own <laughs> I'd rather go whittle 40 of them I'm just annoyed the, the voice in the sky didn't tell me to go to the bridge <laughs> I'm not you here don't blame the DM <laughs> the DM isn't here <laughs> Just because your character doesn't know where to go because she's like alien, oh, cities are alien to her. Don't blame me. Shut up. It's a bad role play. <laughs> oh, I'm going all now. Oof. <laughs> call me out on bad role playing. Don't call me out. <laughs> I don't exist. <laughs> <laughs> the voice in the sky. <laughs> you talk to the gods too. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, I wish I had a voice of suggestion right now, like in my head, because we didn't know where to go to find that guy. Well, it's just like Fable is a gold track that leads you where you need to go. Yeah. <laughs> Clairvoyance on Oblivion. Yeah, and then the Guildmaster repeating himself over and over and over. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> are we in Deacon's Bridge now? Deacon's... Well, how far is it? Yeah, um, it's a couple of districts over. Okay. Uh... You cross a different bridge from where you crossed um, earlier in the adventure, shall we say. Uh, It's like the next one along. Uh, You don't see Bob in the river. There are a few little fishing boats that are like magically held in place in the center of the river. It's funny because Bob probably bobs in the river. Yeah. Well, he does. We realized that after we'd already named... He's like, my character's Babara, but you can call me Bob. I was like, it's because he bobs along. And he goes, fuck, I missed that one. (laughs) It's going cold now. Put your jacket back on that. I can't be doing a hell of a time, can I? <laughs> <laughs> Alright. But, uh, yeah, so... Bob isn't there. Um, you don't see fire along the way. But there's a bit of a, you know, bustle on the streets. Uh, what you, does that mean? 
just <laughs> hustling and bustling. Okay. I thought they meant so you fact. get to Deacon's Bridge and the library is actually one of the first buildings in Deacon's Bridge because it was constructed there specifically to keep the peasants out of Deacon's Bridge. We don't want likes of them. We can allow them just to go into this one little bit. But, you know, it's it's pretty much as you arrive in Deacon's Bridge. The guards here are a lot more heavily armoured and seem to be wearing a different outfit suggesting that they are the private guard. So, okay. But yeah, there's a... Um, a relatively unassuming building. It almost looks like a church, but it's very clearly um, a library because of the big windows in the side. You can see stacks of books, but it could well have been a church that was repurposed. Mm. Someone was probably burnt here once. <laughs> can I hear arrows being made? <laughs> <laughs> no. Like, okay. <laughs> no. chicken was just killed for fletching. North five miles. <laughs> it's like a fucking sonar ping, like yeah. it's just a submarine, subcharine. That was a push. Um, mm. But yeah, he's put, he sent you over to Deacon's Bridge, so you're only about five minutes behind these. So okay, can I see him? I mean, you can check the library. Like so I assume you went straight in. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, are you going in with him, or are you heading I'm off? I'm going. To to the post office okay the post office is only like two more blocks basically um it's it just almost looks like a house it looks like none of the business buildings in this area were built specifically to be businesses they were something else before so um it's very clearly labeled with like a, a big poorly carved envelope on a mm. um like a plaque out the front above the door but uh, it's yeah. It is cool. I'll just As head you approach, you to the post office because I heard Gert say it, yeah. but I didn't catch. You it didn't is wait. called the yeah, Good Deacon's call. Delivery, yeah. and the library is just the Charpire City Library. It just came out of the new show. Pretty <laughs> standard stuff. So we'll do the library first. Okay. So I'm looking for books on Telkaias, and what's happened in the last 900 years right okay um let me quickly uh, name the owner uh, here we go so you walk in and this this little quaint uh, halfling woman with weirdly large hands holding a book sitting at the front just like thumbing through Mind your business, like little glasses down on the end of her, on her nose, with, like hair up in like a bun. She hasn't got like the, the pencil through her or anything, but uh, there is a quill on the table. And uh, you walk in, she goes, Oh, hello, we don't have much like you around here. You're quite a, a spectacle. Thanks. Um, Can I help you with anything, love? Have you got any books on. Uh, I can't pick it up. Tell okay. Chaos? Tell chaos. You know, she like, looks around. She goes, "Can't be that he's saying that around you." It's academic, right? Um, well, we've not got particular books about tell chaos, but um, we do have some about just the uh, the pantheon in general that I'm sure we'll have some pages on her. Eh? Uh, that would be very useful. I can show you. And she kind of gets up, and she is fucking tiny she's like <laughs> two foot eight she's like so small for nice. a halfling and she like basically it's she's an average sized halfling woman that's had osteoporosis or something that's like <laughs> hunched her over she's like this really little old bird and she just pulls out this little stick and starts walking ultra sl like you know in a, a video game where you've got to do an escort quest and oh. the NPC walks real fucking slow like slower than just Slow, or normally they're in that slower than you're running fast than you walk in but she's slower than you can even physically move mm. and she's just like left foot right foot she's like I won't be long hold on be with me <laughs> you you can you can point if you want if you, if you no want. no I insist <laughs> she just keeps going real slow you're there for like a solid 10 minutes as she walks across this like bear in mind this is like one room uh, and she just gets to like the third bookcase in and goes she just points at the bookcase and goes this one and then starts walking back 
The book, the, not even the <laughs> shelf. The case, no, she just points at the case. <laughs> she just walks back. She could have literally just gone third on the left or something, but no, she's going to show you. Is it labelled at all, or is it just... Um, there's, like, a loose numbering system for okay. um, restocking purposes, but your guess is as good as anyone's. I will... <laughs> a mean... lot of them, a lot of the books do have sort of... Uh, named spines at least mm. like with spines with some sort of marking on them okay i'll i'll investigate then i'll find i'll try and find okay make an investigation check. i'm more interested in what's happened to the pantheon in the last 900 years but okay. i would like details about talcaeus as well okay go ahead so make an investigation check i move my other dice out of the way Sixteen, yeah. Um, pretty easily, you find like you can tell this book is uh, this shelf is kind of like religious book shelf. There are literal okay. scripture texts as well for various gods. Um, you know how to s- correctly worship the goddess of this and the god yeah. of that. You know, but after flicking through a couple, there's one that's is it's literally. Does it say the, don't disappear for nine hundred years? Yeah, no, it's called um, the brief history of the gods, and. It was written a good few hundred years back, mm. um, so it's not necessarily going to say everything that's happened in this time. No, but I'll, I'll, uh... but um, it was written about seven hundred years ago, so it's after the um, the oh, what was it? was it? What did I call it? Well, the darkness then, um, and it's clearly a reprint. It's not an original yeah. text, seven hundred years old, but. Uh, within it you find information pretty much on every god in the pantheon so pick a god and we'll start there okay okay so it gives the brief history uh, the the brief outline of her saying that she is the goddess of death that she exists as a counterpart to elor the goddess of life and that they're essentially one soul uh one being but two sides of the same coin then uh, it says that she has a realm to like of her own uh, that's very bad. It doesn't specify the name. It just refers to it as her place. Mm-hmm. Um, and it says that it's essentially an infinite realm of barren rocks and sometimes fire, sometimes lava. Just the most bland hellscape you could think of. Just grey as far as I can see with the occasional like crooked and twisted tree and the occasional husk of a corpse that has been there for a thousand years or more um because the book is literally called a brief history it's quite thin and this particular part on telk like she's the one it seems there's less least information about but it just says well, that it, people it... who worship her tend to be um essentially just cultists or mm. corrupt folk murderers criminals just bad people then that she tends not to be worshipped as such which is part of the reason why she's so bitter because uh, the gods when they get worshipped gain not necessarily power but they just become more influential over the world so they mm. um, so say for example the god of land was worshipped shitlords in the early days where the dwarves mm. were worshipping him he could create these stunning mountains over the next thousand years or whatever mm. but she doesn't have much influence over this world any events over the night last night like um, it, it, it incidents with the cultists it and things like that states there's like a um, a page that someone has spilled something on so some of the writing's a bit wobbly but it does say that around the time that everything went dark that some people assumed that she had killed Lameth the goddess of light but the the rest of it is just kind of so blotchy and stained that you can't make anything out cool any other gods you need to know anything about uh Mr. God of Chaos. Oh, there. That would be nice. Um, weirdly, there's 
one page on him. It's blank on the back. And on the front, you look at it, and it says Theas at the top in some nice scribed calligraphy. And the rest of the page starts to shift as you try to read it. And <laughs> the nice scribed calligraphy at the top starts to move with it and form almost like bleeding patterns down the page. And I need you to make a madness check. <laughs> <laughs> this guy will fuck you up wherever Ooh, you are. Ooh, nice. Two. That's a six Oof. in all. Oof. Okay, so you see this bleeding pattern and then it all shifts to one side of the page and appears to be half of his mask because the mask basically you can see um, I didn't act, I forgot to actually describe it at the time but where it was split into two with like the one big bit of skin the mouth is basically one big rip mm. so you can see his mouth moving which is how you can see all the like, tendrils come out and stuff but as you look at it and it shifts it like winks at you and the moment it does there's this sharp pain in your head and then the page goes back to normal however you suddenly can't make out these words oh. it's written in common but this stunning pain in your head means you can't read this page and you try and the next page and you can't read that Oh, you so it's not even through. his page anymore. No, the whole book just appears to be in almost like a foreign language. It still looks like... What common, if I go back like to the page don't... that I was reading about Telchaeus? Again, you cannot read a single thing. Okay. It's like you've forgotten how to read common. The... You look up at the bookshelf and there's some written in other languages you wouldn't have understood anyway. But there's one in Infernal. And you read that and you could, you're like, oh, okay, I can read that. But all the ones in common are like alien to you. Mm. So for the next um, 30 minutes, you can't read common. Okay. <laughs> you can speak it, but you can't read or write it. Okay. <laughs> Don't read books about chaos go. They'll fuck you up. <laughs> okay. The woman from front goes, is everything okay? If you uh, and I show the book. If you read this one, she like adjusts her little glasses. She's like, "You're gonna have to read that one out to me. Can't see it from you." Uh. It's <laughs> the title of the book. Brief history of the gods. And I put it down and start like briskly walking out. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. C come back soon. She goes back to her book and just like adjusts her glasses again. I stand outside and start like trying to read signs and the anything. The Charpire City Library you cannot read now. Uh, I hate that guy. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. So we'll go back. Oh, then yeah. obviously head That'd to the... That would be so horrible though, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I can't read. <laughs> Yeah, but the thing is, it's 30 minutes mechanically, but you don't know that. That's yeah, no, I'm saying. like... forgotten to learn how to read. <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> Words! I'm like, I'm going to have to write everything in Infernal now. <laughs> Need a translator. I know, yeah. Fyra can understand you. <laughs> Fuck, she can speak Infernal, can she? And she's not here. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay. Um, so, yeah, you you guys are in the... Um, the, the, deacon, the good deacon's... The Dickens. The Good Dickens, whatever the fuck I called it. Hang on. Good Dickens delivery. delivery. There we go. So it's There's so many down. tabs. I just, I just need a, a far more efficient way of organising all my pages. <laughs> <laughs> like holy hell. Have uh, I caught up to um, Gert? Yeah, yeah. You caught up within uh, with ease only because you arrive at the Good Dickens delivery and there's quite a queue. Ooh. Like, so you get to the back and a few people join behind you. Char walks in and you kind of call her forward and the people don't mind too much and you know you stand in there. Cha, cha, good. <laughs> I don't know why I thought there wasn't gonna be a line. I mean, it's the post office. It's like the most special place ever. <laughs> Not. Just 
<laughs> I was going to say, you're just really into bureaucracy and shit and organization. But no, there's, there's people bringing it. There's like people holding parcels and some have got like little scrolls and letters and stuff. It's, it's a very rudimentary post office. It's basically courier service, some carts, sometimes even just like birds that still carry like immediate letters. But how long is the queue? It'll take about 20 minutes or so. I use Sarmaturgy <laughs> to boost my voice to almost sound like an announcement. <laughs> and I'll it's say... It's a fucking tannoy system. <laughs> yeah. um, free pies at the sa- at the town hall. <laughs> <laughs> There's like two free blocks... Free pies at the town hall? <laughs> There's two oh blocks towards the front. You can't go later. Yeah, you... <laughs> Actually... Um, <laughs> Chris, make a deception check and <laughs> Laura make a perception check. Oh, God. <laughs> to see if you fall. Oh, that one. Oh, ooh, fuck. Ooh. Uh, Literally, you have anything above a one. <laughs> yeah, I just want to see okay. exactly what yeah. it is. Get, you don't recognize it to be Bass 17. Boy. All right, you don't recognize that it's Bass <laughs> Boys. So, as far as you can see, it could be Free Pie. But there's two blocks at the front that kind of like nudge each other and you can hear under the breath. It's just what I'm going. I mean, we could come back later. Yeah, go on. Fucking free pie. I'm sure they'll go. Let's go. And then you, like, dip out, so you just move up two spaces in the queue. <laughs> well, at least it's working for us. I'm getting there post office quicker. We still gotta go to that town hall, though. <laughs> Can't pass up with some free pie. <laughs> I'm not gonna tell her. All right, are you gonna... Uh, I'm did you do it from either. inside or did you do it outside and like well I like as I was catching up I saw right. the queue okay cool <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ <laughs> okay so yeah the, there's about a 20 minute wait um, it's been about 25 minutes for you uh, for reference so you've got about another 5 minutes of crippling dyslexia um, yeah it's, it's real bad <laughs> can't read man <laughs> Uh, I'm in a post office and I can't read. <laughs> Why does that sound like a vine? <laughs> I feel like that could be. But yeah, you get to the front and there's a um, just your, your middle of the road, middle-aged man, possibly a half-elf, just plain as day. It's just like... Yeah. Hi, um... I'm I'm real sorry, but um, my grandma she she's not too good anymore. She, the head is all ooh, everywhere. Anyway, she um, starts yawning really loudly she, in your face. She um she she tried to post um a letter to her friend the other day, and um, well I don't think he would have gone yet, but she doesn't think she put the right address on there. I just wanted to check. If it was the right address. I show you that we check every address to make sure it's a valid address. Yeah, but I and, think... And we, th- we send the post out at the end of every single day. So if she brought it in any more than yesterday, it's already gone. Oh. And he just yawns loudly in your face again and starts, like, scratching, like, his uh, ear. Um, yeah. Um, He's, like, bored as fuck. Well, where would the post go if it doesn't get sent? Well, we make sure that every address is valid before the... Oh, my camera. <laughs> <laughs> That's the floor. Uh-oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mind me. Because we make sure all the addresses are valid before we send out <laughs> any sort of post, but before the person even leaves the premises. Classic. So we never have any sort of post that doesn't get sent anywhere. Sometimes no one comes to claim post, but then that goes to a different office. And you sometimes reminds oh. me of the sharks off Nemo. <laughs> w- 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 which oh, office does oh, this Bruce. post go to if it's well, not? It's just like a sorting office around the back, <laughs> but it's not public access. <sighs> Oh, sure, is, is there a bathroom yes. around there? Because I kind of got to go. No, we don't allow public people to use the bathroom. Oh. The bathroom? The, the uh, toilet. We don't have bathrooms. What, what about pregnant women? I'm real no. pregnant right now. And he looks down and he goes, I'm pretty sure chain mail is not good for a baby. But, no. Are you, you judging me? You can't go around the back. Uh, it's staff members only. 
if you've sent a post letter <laughs> or a card <laughs> box whatever and it's been longer than a day <laughs> it's just like showing about four <laughs> she's the dwarf <laughs> If it was sent more than it brought in more than yesterday, it's already gone. Wait, I'm are sorry. you a man? No. Oh. Well. Good. Oh. Gertrude. So, yeah. Gertrude. Ah. Uh. Yeah. I don't know if it's actually Gertrude or not. Well, maybe. Gertrude. Magina. I was going to say that when you said pregnant, I was like, I'm sure you're a man. No, he's been a woman this whole time. But he's like. If you're not going to deliver anything today or you're not here to pick anything up, please just move along because we have a queue. Okay. Um, do you have like some kind of like directory thingy? Because I know the name of someone who I want to post the letter to, but I can't remember their address. Uh, what's the name? Um, I don't know their last name, but their <laughs> first name is Tomac. <laughs> Smart. Well, I mean, there's probably like a hundred in Charpire alone, so you're going to have to be a bit more specific than that. Um, <laughs> he's got a cool tattoo. <laughs> yes, that you know help. him? We've, now we've got names and addresses. Oh, well, c can I just have a look? Because I'm sure if I see the address, I'll kind of know. You can't look at our directories, oh, I'm afraid. No. Oh, uh, oh, okay. And then I just sort of only. ush you away from this. Like, um, chat. Next. I, I, don't, I don't. By the way, you're next in the queue. I don't know how we're gonna do this. <laughs> I'm next. Yeah. I, I, I can't think of a way to get the address. I'm, uh, I'm just with these, and. Uh, oh, hey, Bazaar. <laughs> we need help. Also, this free pride later, we're gonna go get some. Anyway. <laughs> I'm, um, I'm still here, uh, you know. Never mind, sir. And then I pop back outside. Oh, and find a little bit of an alleyway or wh wherever I can sort of hide the fact that I'm casting magic. Right, okay. Yeah. And I'm going to cast Unseen Servant. Cool. Okay, um, make a stealth check as you go into the nearby alley. Not great. Not great at all. Uh, do, do, do. Uh, eight. Eight. Okay, you go into the alley, but there's just this guy leaning against the wall, smoking something. You're not sure if it's tobacco or something a little bit more um, aggressive. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, okay. he's just standing there, and he just he turns to you and goes, "Does he look? Does he look compass mentis enough?" <laughs> for me to for for him to even recognise if I'm casting. For me to find out. I cast unseen servant. Okay. Well so. lucky for you, he's smoking something called grip weed. Okay. And it blows his fucking mind. <laughs> this guy's like, Whoa dude That was like magic or shit, right? Was that magic? Is that what magic is? I'm tripping, man. This is not a good batch, dude. I'm not okay. I think I need to lie down. And I just say, uh, f free pie at the town hall. Free pie? Man, I, I can go for some pie. Do you, would you like some pie, sir? Yeah, yeah, I, I wouldn't mind. Okay, okay. And he just takes one last big puff and is like, oh. <coughs> Uh, pie man, yeah, I, I, I could do with some food. And he just kind of like extinguishes the cigarette like on the back of his hand and goes, oh shit. Puts it back in his like inner court pocket as if he's got like loads of half small <laughs> cigarettes in it. <laughs> and he just <laughs> stumbles away. And he stops, burps really loudly, coughs, farts a little. And he's like, Oh, I'm sorry, man. You, you know, sometimes it just kind of hits you funny, you know? You, you, you know what I mean, man? You know, you know what I mean. He's just standing in the, the like the center of the alleyway in the, the I opening. I cast out. thaumaturgy and make him hear whispers. <laughs> oh fuck! He's like, Dad, the is that you? The word that's used here is ominous whispers. Okay. Ominous. In his head, what he can hear is just a, basically a disappointed father figure, and he's like, <laughs> Dad, is that you? Hello. Sir, do you hear that? And he's like, Oh man, this is a really bad batch, dude. And just to really mess with him, I'm gonna hug him. 
<laughs> he bursts into tears and hugs you and he's like, Dad, I'm so sorry, man. I didn't mean to disappoint you the way I did. <laughs> he's tripping dicks right now. This isn't just your regular old grip weed. This has got something else. Because grip weed is literally just the munchy drug that chills you out. It actually, mechanically, gives you disadvantage on everything except wisdom. Uh, yeah. In fact, it gives you advantage on wisdom because, like, bruh. But uh, okay. he's got a bad batch and he, he starts crying into your shoulder. I'm enjoying this too much. <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> when he lets go of me, I'm going to look like somebody else. Oh, fuck. <laughs> what are you going to find? Um, illusion or this guy's Based self? on him, based on looking at him, yeah. I'm going to see if I can look like his dad. <laughs> See it, you know, try and look like a dad version of him. Okay. <laughs> okay, so you take on the role. He, he's still, he's a like very scrawny, tall human with like a a big Adam's apple, like a, a five o'clock shadow, spiky brown hair that's n- not being washed properly, and like a, a long brown duster coat. And uh, you basically take on a greyer haired, bigger bearded version. And yeah. he looks at you and he's like, Do I know you? You look, you look real familiar man and he goes wait a minute <laughs> wait a minute Uncle Arnold that's you right that's you Arnold I haven't seen you in years man and he's like he's slurring more and more and his mouth starts drooping he's like I haven't seen you in a long time man how you keeping try my hardest to concentrate <laughs> I'm sending my unseen servant into, right, in there know. to get the directory okay cool um <laughs> This guy is making such like a kerfuffle. People start like looking. I out did the double window. check that it wasn't concentration. It was yeah. uh, casting time of one hour. Uh, uh, yeah, duration yeah, of one yeah. hour. So people are starting to like look out the window to like see what's going on, and this guy is just like, oh, yo, dude. but the unseen servant like just goes it when someone comes out of the door, just like sits yeah. in, um, bypasses the queue, so where people come out, and is now basically the counter is. Um, solid from left wall to right wall about like waist high with about this much gap between mm. so it's like there's enough for it to like climb over but y- you're gonna have to... wait does it interact with objects it bumps into and stuff yeah it's um it's just invisible but still invisible makes noise mindless shit. shape plus medium force that performs tasks it yeah it can Ooh, right, it's got examples. Servant can perform simple tasks that a human being servant could do, such as fetching things. And wiping your ass. So fetching things as... Uh, yeah. Uh, cleaning, mending, folding clothes, lighting fires, serving food, and pouring wine. Sounds like oh. my job. <laughs> 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 okay, so... Make a... <laughs> make an acrobatics check for it as it goes Ooh. over the counter. You wouldn't have any modifiers i don't think assume it's your modifiers assume it's like a, a replica of you Ooh, nice just a spooky invisible i don't know if this is how it works but i'm fucking running with it yeah you're the boss anyway it's fine yeah boy uh <laughs> acrobatics you said yeah uh 16 yeah quite gracefully just as it walks in, you can sense that it just does this like tuck and roll over the top, just like <laughs> swan dive. Yeah. So yeah, it, it lands the other side easily enough. And there is like a, you could see when you're at the front that the log book is a big, thick bastard just kind of behind the the guy. Um, can you, s- you can't see through the eyes of the servant, can you? Or you can't have no, it? No, I, I give it a mental command and then that's it. Right, okay. Um, and I just said basically fetch the directory <laughs> he's quite a big boy yeah it's got thousands of entries in it's you know it's like a bible but the thing is it can't okay yeah it it can't uh, relay information back to me so it would, would it have to, to pick, fetch something would it be able to pick up a quill and write on paper or would that involve too much intelligence no well it can it can it can write it can fold clothes it can pour wine okay so assuming you can scribe a message you could probably you know would Chris be able to use now is his comment back 
I'm gonna yeah, it's covering his back. Okay. I'm gonna say that I just said fetch the directory. I okay. I'm not I'm not trying to give myself my character any oh, more foresight than I just. What's the weight capacity that it can carry? Very good question. What a handsome question. Because this is a beefy book. Mm, it's all proper parchment as well, so it's even like thicker paper. So you're talking like at least 120 GSM. For all you paper nerds out there. It is a thick boy. You're looking at it just has a strength is. of two. Oh, okay. How the fuck did that work? <laughs> um, that was really weird. Is, yeah, this is a... A big directory, to be fair. Um, I mean, I could give it a strength check if you want, but that if the strength is two, that's not a strength modifier of two. That's a minus, like the modifier would be mi minus four. So I yeah. could do a strength um, check if say, you want. Also, just so you, you're aware, you, from in the alley where you are, you can see there is like a back entrance, so he doesn't necessarily have to come out back over the front. There is a door that clearly is where the staff go in and out so they don't have to climb over this fucking counter every day. Mm. Okay. So, are you attempting to pick it up? Yeah, I'm going right. to have a go. Uh, I suppose make a strength check then. Okay. So, m minus four. Minus four, so that would be 11. Okay. Um, it lifts it. It's kind of hovering there at the moment. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to make a perception check I'm for the person at the front say, of the I'm queue. I'm causing a scene now, aren't I? Luckily, the person at the front of the queue is fucking blind. Okay. <laughs> and the guy who's facing forward is too tired to even notice. Okay. So, you can start moving it. <laughs> I, I guess I'll just... You know, it because it's just a command that I've given... It will probably just try and do the best. It's, it's kind of like Mr. Meeseeks at this point. Yeah. Just try and do your best thing. So I'm just waiting outside for this. I'll know when it drops, but that's it. Okay. Um, and it's got an hour. Make a <laughs> sleight of hand check. For him, is it? Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's a 17. Ooh, that's a good one. Again, lucky the guy behind the counter is both blind and deaf, according to the dice. Mm. Um, it kind of drops it to the floor so no one can see it, so it's tucked down behind. Slides <laughs> along to the door, yeah. and you can just hear like a. Okay. As if he's trying to push it under the door and it's getting stuck. <laughs> okay, I'll just go and fetch it. Alright, the guy's like, where, where are you going, man? Uh, you know, we, we need to catch up. We haven't, we haven't seen each other in years, dude. I just dropped this guy's cell. Shit, <laughs> man. Did I imagine that again? <laughs> Wait, so you weren't my uncle, man? I need that pirate out now, man. And he just sits down like, with his back against the, the wall, puts his head in his hands. He's like, oh, man, I think the dealer got the shit mixed up. I don't feel like it. He starts crying again for no <laughs> apparent reason. He's like... Wait, why am I crying? This sweet pie. He gets up and dusts himself <laughs> off, kind of like adjusts his jacket, pulls the the little I feel joint, whatever, so back evil. Out, lights it back up with like a little match. And he's like, oh, pie. And walks out. <laughs> he just leaves you there. I feel so evil for for tempting people with uh, with fake. Like pie. lie pie. Some fucking stoner with the munchies who's desperate for some free pie. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're the worst. Yeah. yeah, this you can just still hear the, f -th -f -th -f you know the the door bit. Is that within view of the people behind the counter? It is. Okay, so, so I'll just stealthily try and open the make door. Make a stealth check for the door. Well, not for the door, for opening the door. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nineteen. <laughs> <laughs> they're so enthralled in their postal conversation they're arguing semantics over like postal code at the moment um, they're discussing whether like the, the guy at the front is arguing that he's written it out right uh, where he's got like the series of letters and a series of numbers and the guy behind the counter is arguing that he's left too much space between one of the numbers and it gets <laughs> very confusing and he thinks it means somewhere completely different so they're, mm. they're really arguing the semantics 
and you just kind of like unlatch the door because it's not even locked. They need what three words? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've actually got that on my phone. Yeah. Um, I'll show you later. It's basically, it's, it generates three random words. So if you're ever lost on like a mountainside or you don't know where you are and you need a paramedic, uh, or you know, you aid, just give them you the just three give words. Them three words, and it gives them a, an exact like square on a map. Like every X amount of meters has got its own little Basically, the company who made it mapped every square or every two square meters, two square meters of Britain. the entire Earth. Oh, so Earth. To, That's what it's Britain. Fuck. To um, a, a set of three words, randomized. That's just We're not like a little public but that service. That sounds like a really good idea. Yeah, yeah. what three words? Yeah little pu- public service announcement go and get it because if you're ever in major trouble and you're stuck up a mountain and you've only got like enough battery to make one phone call you need to make it count so go and download yeah. it yeah I've got it you should get it too uh, but anyway so they're arguing semantics uh, over postcode and you just unlatch the door it takes like a little moment because it's it's quite like a firm handle and you just budge it open enough it seems to get stuck on something but it's just wide enough for you to like the unseen servant flips the book up mm. and you can like slide it out vertically oh. so you've now got the book yeah. and you just slowly latch it back behind you again quietly after oh god fucking hell <laughs> uh-huh. hello again <laughs> right you gotta attach why is, it why is that one fine it's still a bit don't fun. tempt it yeah don't touch it <laughs> gosh darn it okay um, hmm, okay. Do you want a break or anything? If you need yeah, to let's take a break. I need a wee. Okay. okay. Yeah, we'll um come back in like five, ten minutes, whatever. Bye. And I will hopefully fix the camera. Yeah. So hit that BRB button. Uh, we believe the problems are mostly fixed. Ish. Uh, last minute tinkering. I think it needs to oh. dip down a bit more. Oh. Oh. Yep, that's perfect. That'll do. That'll do, pig. There we go. There we go. So yeah, you managed to get your hands on this ledger somehow with the most oblivious guys in the world working there and at the front of the queue. Yep. Luckily, the the back room is split off completely into a separate back room, so there wasn't just people, you know, there. So uh, yeah, the most oblivious people in the world. You've nabbed the big book. What you gonna okay. do with it? I'm gonna take it around front. Because it's gonna it's gonna have addresses on there, so I'm not gonna know where any of these places are. Okay. So I'll take it to the people who know. Well, the person who would know. Okay. What what is it? It's the uh, directory. They were very nice, and they let me have it. Oh well, I was really nice. They told me to bugger off, basically. Okay, thanks. Um, so did you, did, have you looked in there, have, have you found a name, of, well, not the name, but you looked for Tomac and where he lives, or a Tomac? No, I, mean, you, I, I thought I'd leave that to you. Okay, um, how about we just take this over to the town hall, because I really want to go and get that pie before they're all gone. Uh... I think they're probably all gone by now. Well, I don't know for certain if they're gone. I, I really want some pie, so I'm going to head over there. Um, okay, that that was me. What do you mean that was you? I used my voice. I, I... What? What do you mean you used your voice? I can project my voice uh, pretty well. So... You used your voice to tell everybody that there's free pie in the town hall. Yeah, it got us in quicker. Did it, though? Yes. Yeah, I guess, but you could have come and told me first because I really wanted some free pie. <laughs> so hung up on this pie. You can see the stoner like, wandering off in the distance down the street, stopping to talk to random people and then head in, in the general direction of the town hall. <laughs> poor bastard so i'm, I'm <laughs> considering how deceitful you are i'm kind of wondering whether you didn't really get given this book and you kind of stole it no uh, they, they give it to me are you sure yeah yeah well somebody gave it to me was it somebody who worked in the post office 
know. Then you stole it. I didn't steal it. Okay, who stole it? Stephen. <laughs> Stephen with a PH. Stephen. With a, who's that? He's my unseen servant. So, you did steal it because you you told him to go Stephen and steal it. Stole it. it. <laughs> Stephen did steal it. <laughs> Right. Steals a lot of things. Uh, let's just find a quiet area. <laughs> Me, you, and Char can go and look the wood and try and find <laughs> something. Okay. An address. Even if, even if there's like ten guys called Tomac, at least we got something. We can whittle it down. Okay. So you're just gonna find like a, a quiet spot, so to say. Yeah. Um. Okay. You are only a couple of blocks away from the riverfront. Like a waterfront. Um, there's not necessarily like parks or recreation areas in Deacon's, Deacon's Bridge because it's very built up and basically if you don't live here and don't have enough money, you're not welcome in like the core area of Deacon's Bridge, even though it's a lot more open than it used to be. Like, good luck. Mm. So you can head back kind of out towards the temple court to like the spiral bit. Yeah. Yeah, we'll go that way. Okay. So you cross back over the bridge again, no sign of Bob. <laughs> um, what are your passive perceptions? I need to write them down. Fifteen. Okay, hang on. I'll write them down just so I know. Eleven. Um, twelve. Mine is eleven as well. I didn't even know you had passive insight. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Um, what's your ACs as well? Just so I can like write down things so I don't have to ask all the time. At the moment. Mine's 18. Mine's 16. Mine's 12. Cool. This basically just so I know. And I've got a little clip thing here. Ha ha. Ha ha. See? Yeah, see? Quack. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, Char hears it, you guys don't, but as you uh, get sort of to the other side of the bridge, down towards Kindleward where you've been spending your time, there is a, like a scream on the wind. Um, it sounds like a woman, very shrill, but there seems to be a sort of kerfuffle when down towards Kindleward. And after a few seconds, there's another little scream. And then some shouting in general. And it picks up pretty quickly. And that's when you two start hearing it. Like, after a few seconds, you're like, hmm. They really don't take kindly to be lied about pie. Lied to about pie. Yeah, you need to think about what you did. <laughs> Time out. Get in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna look in this book. <laughs> <laughs> Are you you're it's literally like writing that off as like <laughs> No but I think the character is literally writing it off as yeah they don't like the, the, <laughs> yeah, they, yeah. There's, there's no pie. This. Um Don't you want to uh see about the screams? <laughs> Well, there's no pie. It's quite obvious what's happened here. Humor me. <sighs> All right. You owe me a pie, how, though. How big is this book? I've got um, a pretty big satchel, but that's it. It's going to poke out the top, and like the drawstring is going to be like stuck on it. It's quite uh, a big bastard. Okay. It can get in your backpack, but yeah. like, um, I assume, have you got like a backpack or like a messenger bag like all messenger bag yeah okay um yeah it can you can just about kind of flip the lid over the top but where you kind of tie it closed with like a the little leather belt type thing mm. it goes just onto the first one so it's not going to fall out but it's obvious you've got something large in your bag okay yeah i'll just i don't mind carrying around a large thing just uh maybe not the you know so everyone can see yes he's got the directory of the town walking around you know so I'll just try and hide it. Ah, cool. 
Okay. So we'll head towards the uh, kerfuffle. <laughs> the, the kerfuffle. Okay. As they say in the biz. As you approach, Char spots it first. Again, because the past perception thing. Um, but there appears to be a man, quite a, a large man, that's staggering after people and people are running away from him and people are dropping baskets of fruit and people are just evading this area it looks like it kind of came up and out of the the river it's not bob <laughs> bob's just like destroy <laughs> um, <laughs> but you can you can see it a couple you know hundred feet in the distance so is there anything you want to do as you approach it that you're going to approach it um nah. I, I I want to approach to the point where I can where I can make out details okay. about this. I want to approach to the point where I can shoot it with Eldritch Blast. <laughs> <laughs> that also that. But no, yeah, just Fuck so I can make more. out details. Okay. Um you get to about um say like 100 100 120 feet away. Um and it appears just to be a regular man, but he looks almost water bloated. Uh, possibly not even from the water, just bloated in general. But he's got, you can see he's got like little stubs where his hands have kind of curled up into balls. Uh, you can make out quite outwardly sloped, large black eyes. Um, but from the distance, that's pretty much all you can see. It's like very obvious that his eyes are just too big for his face, even at this distance. But he's just lunging at random people and coughing and is making just a horrible... Is he saying noise. anything? No, he's just kind of making a gurgling noise and no. raspy <laughs> every now and again. No, when you say his hands are like balls, do you literally mean... Not balls? like actual balls. Or I mean, like, like fists. He's like curled up into fists, but it, it looks like it's kind of... Almost as if he's super severe arthritis, like he's mm. doing this and he can't unball Undo his hands. That, yeah. yeah, and the the skin looks like a like a swollen purple color. Mm. I just lean over to you and say, "You know where that's from, don't you? It's from like a pie." I'll I'll approach and I'll be like, "Sir, how close?" Close enough that I'm I'm the closest person to him. Okay, so about thirty feet, say. Yeah, and I'm just I'm gonna actually try and communicate. Just okay. Like. So as you shout, his head like snaps towards you because he's been like wandering the other way, and you can see he has very pin like like needle like teeth, and all the skin around his mouth has kind of been flayed off. Um, there's a very you're standing downwind, and there's a very pungent fish-like smell of it uh, coming from him. Okay. Um, the purple swelling in his hands, you can see that one of them has got like blisters and pustules and nodules and all the other gross stuff. Uh, and he just... I'm revived this. Okay, he just kind of spits at you <laughs> and as he does, it get, like from the river comes some like just like this stream of water and the spit goes directly in the centre of it and there's just this moment like Ah, <laughs> just, just some of the moisture him. from him comes off, and it just wraps around you, and there's like this faint fishy smell to the armor. So when it hits you, you're like, "Oh fuck, <laughs> this isn't Bob." <laughs> um, if you would please put out the battle mats. Ooh, ooh, yeah. ooh! That's fighting. It's fighting time. Fighting time. Um, I don't know how close you guys got to it. Um, if you want to pop this down as the the bad guy, <laughs> so if you grab the mm, the pen, Battle I could do that. Look. Look at that. Hey, if you grab the pen and you draw kind of like a line right the way down, kind of here on this line, this this line, yeah, and just all yeah, the way down, all the way down. That's basically the street edge. So that's kind of where uh, the um surprisingly the straight for lefty is, like the um not necessarily the river bank but the the wall at the edge of the river bank so all in here is like river okay and he's climbed up and out if you want to put the guy kind of like there 
So is yeah, that the yes, guy? Yes, that's the guy. I don't have a mini for him, so. Um, and then put yourself. Well, with, well, well I was, you said within thirty feet yeah. of him. If it's you saw so far uh, this way towards yeah. me. I'd say okay. If you move there. everything, if you move both of them down like four squares, just so we have more room this way. Uh, and then if you put good and char kind of another say thirty feet behind uh, Balth. I'm trying to do this. Twenty this feet behind yeah. Balth. I don't know. You put you where you want. So all of all along here is like uh, shop fronts. It's quite a wide street for the most part, but this is like a solid wall that's about waist height. Okay. Kick up to battle music. Hold on. Oh, I'm facing them, the wrong way. Them <laughs> waist high walls. I can't see the fur of my coat. <laughs> <laughs> I just literally went, yes. Uh, <laughs> oh. Something's happening. Again. Did I do that? No. Oh. Oh no. Oh, oh, no. Oh, I'm disappointed I, I didn't wanted do that. to destroy stuff. No. God damn it. This was so well behaved last week. Okay. Now that Balt has kind of gained his attention and used armor rag at this, I would like you to roll initiative. Roll initiative. Roll initiative. Why isn't the music playing? Get back on the... Bottle of wood. I'm loosening it now. That's, 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 that's great. <laughs> I get it all lined up and then loosen it more. Great. Oh, great. Aye. Oh, aye. Oh, aye. It's you. Aye, Can't find a, a good that. music theme for it okay uh initiative Ooh, it's bad there we go okay you take the initiative 20 or over Ooh, 10 or over what'd you get 13 and you 14 okay um oh i like this music wait so what did you say 14 and 13. 13. That'll be an 8 for me. Okay, cool. So, after you apply the armor of Agathis, this thing just immediately lunges towards you. So, it, it's going to move 20 feet in a straight line towards you. Okay. Okay. Uh, oh, sorry, 25. 25. Okay. So, it's, oh, it's within 5. E. Um, okay, it'll just it basically comes running at you, mouth open. You can see all this flesh that's kind of been. It's almost as if it's got like a um, flesh eating virus around its mouth. It doesn't look like it's rotted over time. It looks like it's been. It's, it's a relatively fresh wound. Yeah. Then it just looks like it's all been burnt away in a way. And uh, big needle like teeth, almost like anglerfish, come biting down towards you. And it's just going to swing for your arm. So okay. as you're kind of pulling your arm away from a cast an armor bag, this or I assume summoning in your sword, it's like lunging for your arm. So it's gonna okay. attack with a. What does it get to hit? Okay, so it's gonna miss with a ten on its bite. Okay. However, it's gonna swing one of its arms at you. Okay. And it's going to hit with a fourteen. Which oh no yeah. Oh shit! I've put Balthazar's AC as Char's AC. Yeah, well, you still hit anyway. Yeah. There we go. Right, so Balt and Char are sorted now. Um, so he hits you. Firstly, he hits for... Um, three piercing damage. Okay. And... Uh, three necrotic damage. And I need you to make... A constitution saving throw for me, please. Okay. Does he do the armor of Agathis thing yet, or? Oh yeah, that that'll trigger when he punches you. So. Uh. Okay. So should I just still roll for a con uh, constitution? Is it? Yes. I'll roll for that first then. Uh, that'll be a five. Ooh, you are poisoned until the end of its next turn. Sick. Yep. You've um, the bar. <laughs> 
because there's just you get hit with this big necrotic blast that first of all the moment he comes within 10 feet of him he stinks to high heaven like nice. you feel like a wretch in here and there and that'll be five cold damage to him okay five cold damage bam so he punches you essentially just with this corrupted looking stub that he calls an arm <laughs> I just punched you in the ribs <laughs> it's as he gets this close as well you realize that he looks very human but fish-like features as though he's been transformed like transfigured somehow yeah um how many that was for three or four three piercing three necrotic okay so that was six in all then yeah okay um but it looks like it could well have been human very recently just well fishy bug like eyes that have like drooped and his skin has bloated and sagged apart from around his mouth just peeled away um so that's gonna be his turn yeah so now we go to char no okay just before me yeah I, I wrote them down. I wrote 14 and 13 and I wrote them the wrong way around. <laughs> You've been double checked at us as well. I know, I know. Wow. Sorry. Okay, good then. Sorry. Okay. That makes a bit so, I want to cast Searing Smite. Cool. Can yeah. I just cast that? Bonus Please. action, yeah. Because I think, <laughs> I think with Smite you can actually trigger. Because it's like when the first time you hit in a round, I'm not sure whether you can like just trigger it. Legit actually holding the camera up right now. Oh, God. Is bad. Is that bad? Yeah. Actually. Tape! Just a sec. Do you want me to hold it? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, that's fine. So you cast her as a bonus action. So the yeah. first time you hit, you'll trigger bonus damage. So will I have to move first? Or can I move? Because I want to yeah, move, move as well. So yeah, that's fine. Move yeah, first. so if you use your bonus action to cast her in smite, you move. Or you move. So I'll move first. Can we ring the other people watching? So if I cast that, yep. and it says, the next time you hit a creature with a melee weapon, attack during the spell's duration, your weapon flares white hot intensity, and the attack deals extra 1d6 fire damage to the target, yep. and causes the damage from night into flames. So if I attack now with my... So I've cast the spell, so if I attack with my... Ta-da! It's a bit closer um, now. Battle axe. Yep. I'll do the damage and an extra 1d6, yeah? Mm-hmm. Cool. So I'm going to go in roll with a oh. oh my good lord, what are you doing? It's just zoomed in on you now. You s- the stare. 19 to hit? It's. Cool. 1d8. Because you one hand again. Yes. Because you got a shield. D8. This one? So, 7, 8, 9, 10, so that's 11, Oof. just on there, and then 1d6 damage as well. Damage. Which is going to be a 4. Cool. So there's a decent whacking. And then um, with the, sorry, with the searing smite. smite thing, it says, at the start of each of its turns on the spell ends, the target must make a constitution saving throw. On a failed save... It takes 1d6 fire damage. Yeah. So you've ignited him. But I will say because he's basically just dragged himself out of the river that he's so doused, you did ignite him because it's magical fire, but he will get advantage on putting it out mm-hmm. because of how wet he is. Yeah, fair. Um, so next up is Char. Um. Ooh, had a weird shiver there. Sorry, boys. <laughs> yeah. I keep having shivers here as well. It's because it's cold in here. I still don't if know. you want, you can chuck a few of the crates down as like scatter terrain in like yeah, front of the thing or like by the walls and you know, just plop Dress down it a few up. little crates. Yeah, I need to paint them. I will fun. paint them. I need to take them home though. Wait, wait. Just um, about. Yeah, just kind of like about here somewhere. One of them maybe up here. Uh, there. There we go. Just kind of like dockside, well, like riverfront crates of stuff. Random shit. Um, but yeah, I need to, I need to uh, paint them. Um, Shouldn't be out of fucking crates. <laughs> yeah. So, Cha, what do you want to do? 
Uh, I'm gonna use my bonus action to cast Hunter's Mark. Okay. Have you got the little icon for it yet? Like the little ring? Oh yeah, but it's in that bag. Alright, don't worry about it. I can it. see it. Oh, okay. <laughs> but I can't open the bag. You should just leave it out. Uh, it's a dice though. Oh. That's alright, just put it around the, the dice. I need to tilt the camera slightly. Oh. oh. I'm a bit. You dropped poisoned. Oh, which actually you can put around Chris. Thank you. Oh. Because he poisoned. Yeah, I'm, I'm all. I'm, I'm poisson. I'm a fish now. Poisson. No, he's a poisson. <laughs> okay, cool. And so, what are you going to do? Then. What are you going to do? I'm going to hit him with my bow. Well, not with my bow, my <laughs> arrow. <laughs> that I didn't get. <laughs> Yeah, you haven't gone to get them yet. Oh, I'm so pissed. Yeah, but you've still got arrows. Yeah, so you've got I arrows. have got arrows, yes. you got like another 30 odd of them. Yes. So you were just being proactive. Yes. Yeah. And I failed. <laughs> the one time in my life I tried to do something proactive. To be fair though, we did get chucked into combat and we weren't expecting. Oh. Okay, you rolled do outside you of your rolling Do you expect combat, train? really? Yeah. Yeah, okay. 26. I mean, with the screams. 26 hits. And don't forget to take off an arrow. No. Um. So you managed to like pin one right underneath, like between Bath's chest and his arm, and sticks this thing right in the gut. And as it hits, there's just this extra puff of fishy smell. Oh, it's like rotten nice. fish, so it's not even just like fresh fish. It's like that shit's been out in the sun. Nice. Ew. It's not good. Gross. Seven. Why? Why go? Oh, why go? Eight. Eight damage. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Is that your turn? Did yeah. you roll the bonus damage on? Yeah. Was that what you said? Why? I rolled it, and I like because the hit dice fell out of my tray, and then the d6 fell into my coat. <laughs> Jesus out Christ. of my tray how do you miss that bad I don't know alright so Balth on the start of your turn I need you to make another constitution saving throw because the smell is so bad from this distance oh that's a three. Oh, okay you're not just poisoned until the start of the end of its turn you're now poisoned for a minute okay so ten rounds <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh. That was a one, not a three a one. Oh, fuck that's even worse however you are now immune to his fishy smell for um, five hours. <laughs> Fish smell. I know that sounds weird, but basically, um, the smell can poison you. I mean, armor of Agathis is the reason it. I'm immune to Bob's smell. Yeah, but um, you can start if you start within five feet of him. He's so pongy that it just poisons you. Like it makes you really sick and dizzy. But okay. then you kind of become accustomed to the smell once he's poisoned you. <laughs> so. Did he hit me? He only hit me once, didn't he? Yeah. Okay. For two different damage types. Cool. Um, I'll just give him a slash. Smack him. I'll slash him with my sword. Oh, nice. Hmm? Uh, that will be... 18 to hit. It's nice. Where's my D8? It's right there. That'll be four damage. Four damage. Four slashy damage. Cool. Um. I wonder. I wonder. I wonder. I wonder. wonder. No, that's me. No okay. bonus actions. Cool. Gonna stay there as well. No worries. Um. So yeah, the. The stench hits you strong, but you manage to, like, through watery eyes and a, <laughs> a stinging nose, you just slash him right in the arm. Yeah. You carve off this, like, big pustule, and it just starts, like, leaking this thick, purplish ichor. It's like a black purple ichor. I did four damage just Thank then. You. So did you just three? Four. Uh, um, yeah, no, it was four. I wrote it down correctly. I just did the maths in my head wrong. Because I'm dumb. Um, 
So it's going to go back up to its turn. He's going to bite towards Balth for um, 14. So hits. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the bite? I'm going to make a con saving throw with Ooh, the well. Oh, the fire. Yeah. I was going to say, you don't have to make a con saving throw, but you do take... Oh, fucking hell. <laughs> Don't die. Ken, oh. stop trying to kill players. How much? 13 piercing damage. 13. Yeah. That's exactly the number of hit point points I had left. That was the highest roll. And modifier. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Press in all of it. Although it does get hit back with armor of Agathis. No. What? Doesn't I it? Only, he took out all my temporary hit points. Oh. With the one hit. All right. Okay. Ooh. So yeah, I'm down. Ouch! Jesus Christ! I and go down a lot. Yeah, he's gonna <laughs> he's gonna swing for Gert. <laughs> Misses with an eleven. Um. Ooh, wait a minute. I need right. So he hit you with thirteen, yeah. Yeah. I need you to make a um Constitution check again, please. Uh, 16. Oh, you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yep, you're fine for now. Don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this you boy. Right yeah. Okay, to be fair, I did balance this for five players, but I have dropped his health considerably, but I balanced, like, everything else for five players, so he's going to be doing a little bit of damage. Whoops. Okay. Whoops. Um, okay, so well, it's gonna go to Gert, who's gonna have to make a Constitution check because of the fishy stench, hmm. which is literally the the keyword that I've written for an ability, fishy stench. Yes. <laughs> Not eighteen. Yeah, you're fine. You just power through it. Most <laughs> of the stench kind of just rises above your head. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So it's still a bit whiffy, a bit fishy, but you're like, oh, power through, power through. Hold your breath. <laughs> it's like, you've turned your head away and gone. If I want to do lay on hands, can I do lay on hands on Chris or no? Yeah. Oh, do I have to do that before I attack or after? I uh, think it's, it's, what it's is an the action. I it's an action, yeah. is it? So what you is can the attack thing? Does it say 1A? Huh? Casting time? Does it say 1A. casting time 1A on it? I think it is an it's action. It's just in my action. It's in my actions. Yeah, yeah. so it would it's be an action, action wouldn't it? <laughs> okay, I think up. I'd rather do lay on hands on you. Okay. So, how do I do it? Um, right, have you got like 10 health in the pool or something? Restore 10 HP. Okay, so you can restore up to 10 health to Balth. You can do it all at once, or you can save some for, like, if he goes down again, you can pick him back up on one or whatever. So you got 10 to use. In you could the use, day, like, half pool. now. Yeah, yeah, I think I'll use half now. Yeah, okay. So come back up with five. Okay. Which is a, a decent amount of health for me. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, you're a squishy little boy. <laughs> Boop, 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 boop. Okay, cool. Um, so that's your action. Have you got a bonus action that you can do? Actually, he needs to make the check as well, doesn't he? Constitution save of what? Um. Ugh. Uh, for the. For the fire. Fire the smite. Let me he see. didn't roll particularly well, so unless um, it's real fucking low. It just says, Charlie must make constitution save throw on a fail, save or take a 1d6. Okay, um, go out. to your spell casting section, like your spells. Yes. And at the top it'll say like to hit spell oh, casting. Oh yeah, con 12. 12, okay, so it just, he fucks it. It was a d6 fire damage? Yeah. Alright, roll. Five. Even with the advantage he rolled real shit. Nice. That's what we like to hear. Go good. Yep. Great. Um, so, go good, go. Uh, that's him. That's good. Um, oh, wait. Have you got a bonus action? Do you want to do it? Did you say? Uh, I don't think I have any. I'll double check. If not, we head to char. No. None that I want to do anyway. Yes. Char. Ooh. Char. Okay, the music's being weird. Okay, cha go. Okay. 
I'm just gonna go over by this box now. Alright. Great. Yeah, I'm just gonna move. Fuck you guys. Bye. Wait, <laughs> how <hell's> that? <laughs> me thinks me has a cunning stunt. I know it's cunning plan, but cunning stunts wrong. Gimme, gimme, gimme. I haven't got a plan. I'm Are you not there. lying me down? Think, uh, no, I you're think not. I oh, yeah. have a cunning plan. I'm just gonna Ooh. try and hit him with my bow. <laughs> but I'm still poisoned. Yes, you are. With your bow. I'm still a fish. Oh, he's still a fish. What? That one. Roll again. No, no. 18. Okay. Mm. Roll an attack with disadvantage for me, please. What, like attack roll? Just roll yeah. another attack. Just roll another attack roll, but with disadvantage. And again. Yeah. Um, and oh, wait, is that a 6 or a 9? Dots at the bottom. For six. For both. Just the ah. the dot signifies which way is the right way no, up. No, but this is six. Right. It's a okay. six. Okay. And do I do I get do I not get to add my thing? Add the the modifier as well. Fourteen. Fourteen total. Okay, you you're fine. Basically, he was rolling against Gert with disadvantage, but you got such a high armor that you you're fine. How's that happen? What? He's ended up out of focus. That was really weird. <laughs> What's going on there? There's nobody wants to see me. Odd. Okay, so yeah, you um. That's fine. You roll against Gert with disadvantage, so an armor goes, uh, an arrow goes pinging off the back <laughs> of your armor, but it does shatter, so that arrow's fucked. Okay. Um. Yeah, Gert, you feel a scratch, but it, you can kind of see like a ting on your back. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> it's, it's very, it, very. Is calm. it because of your mic? Is like, he focusing on the mic? Yeah, maybe. Fuck knows. Okay. okay, is that your turn, Chad? Oh god, it's so cold in here. I can see my breath. <sighs> I can't. I see you lying. <laughs> okay. Um, have you got a bonus action? No. Okay. Uh, Balth is up. Okay. It goes to you, but you are passant, so you get disadvantage on attacks and shit. That's a. It's a. Uh, eleven to hit. Hit. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice. 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 It's mate. basically just a bloke in like tattered cloth, and he's quite bloated and slow. So. Does five slashy damage. Is there anything else you can do? Uh, no. Okay. I'm just gonna... um, so it goes back up to its turn. And the fact that you've just stood up, like, d basically defying him almost. Like, yeah. he's he's angry at the fact that he's just sent you to the ground and you're, like, still standing. So he's going to swing at you. Ooh, 11 misses. Mm. Ooh. He's going to bite at you. Ten misses. Um, anything else he can do? No, but he will. Mm, actually, no. He's gonna stay where he is. You stay where he is. So then it goes to Gert. 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 Gert and Bernie. Mm. Yeah. Eight. Miss. It goes wide. You kind of like slap towards him with a hammer and he just blocks it with his arm and he just it hits him but he just doesn't care. It doesn't seem to phase him at all. Um, so if that's your turn then we have Char. Oh wait. Um, I forgot to make the fire save for him. Oh yeah. Uh, ooh. Okay. He makes that one with a 21. Yeah. So fine. He's not on fire. It kind of doused as the as he goes swinging for Balthazar and it just kind of like generates enough wind <laughs> yeah. to like put it out. Um, it was dwindling anyway. Uh, so, yeah, char. Once more. Once more. Once more into the bridge. Shoot him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, nat 20. Oh, crit. Nice. Uh, it's like damage. gone like... 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. You you shot Gert in the back and you're like, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> right in the eye socket. <laughs> I do that a lot. Okay. Six. My tits hit me in the face when I run downstairs too quick. Um. <laughs> 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 Two frame animation. <laughs> Should I just say it all together? Um, right. What What did you roll on your first dice? Ten. Oh, five double. Wait. You do D8 Wait, damage. I rolled a six. Right. Okay. So um, that, double, that doubles seven, to a twelve. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Plus four. Right. So that's sixteen. Okay. Um, what's... And then what's your uh, damage for the mark? Five. Five double to ten. What did I say? Fifteen, is it? Mm -hmm. uh, so 25 damage. And he needs to actually make a check now. Because basically you hit him straight through the eye socket. And he lays out like a... <sighs> as he drops to the floor. <laughs> and as he hits his face on the floor, the arrow comes like out the back. However... Oh, actually, he physically can't do it. You did so much damage, his trait doesn't kick in. He's got this thing, Undead Fortitude, where uh. it's a DC of a standard plus the damage dealt to finish him off. Yeah. But you dealt such a massive blow that he'd have did to he... roll 29. Yeah, and he just can't roll that. And he that. physically... The highest he can roll is 23. So his trait doesn't kick in. Cause the idea is that if he passes it, he stands back up and he's good to go again. Yeah. But you have killed him. So, nice. Turn the thing off. So you, you kind of manage to pin, but uh, you ping one off of Gert's back. You line up a second shot. You just deep breath to yourself. Rest, kind of like the the bow, almost against the the crate to give you an extra bit of pull. Let one loose. It just goes through his eye socket. Sticks out the back. Drops. Comes poking out the top, and his brain just comes out after it. it's like so much pressure going through the back of his head that mm. it like you know if you have a um like a milkshake and you suck the straw and you move your mouth away and it still keeps coming out the top yeah because uh, of the pressure it's like that but with nice. his brain um nice but as he drops face down um you immediately notice a snake tattoo on the back of his neck i knew it I damn had, it i had a feeling <laughs> as well so i mean that was crime what he was doing he yeah. was doing crime so, yeah, he's now lying face down in a puddle of blood and brain. And you were like, ha, I didn't even... I didn't die. <laughs> <laughs> Could have been worse. Oh, And God. also, you know that uh, constitution save I made you do? Mm. Actually, make a medicine check instead. I'm not just going to give that away. Make a medicine check. The spells, I'm going the wrong way. Or a nature check, whichever. It'll probably be the same, but you may be proficient in one. Medicine and or nature. Not and, or nature. Uh, that'll be a 20. Oh, fuck, yeah. You know from experience that this is a type of zombie. You're not sure what type of zombie, because you've never seen one be so fish-like. Um, but when he took you down, you felt this like pulse in you from the hit but you shrugged it off but basically if you had failed you would have contracted tavern rot so he is a tavern rot zombie um and you know that if you contract a disease from a zombie you have a very limited number of days to actually sort that cure out cure it or yeah. you'd become one so yeah you shrugged that one off luckily uh, and he didn't get back up, so his traits were basically irrelevant in this fight, but that doesn't mean there won't be more. Sweet. But yeah, so he's lying face down, there's like a, a snake tattoo, you f like you flip him, and he's very clearly the most plain man you've ever seen, yeah. apart from the fact that he's now got fish-like features. But he matches the description, you, you could tell he was human. Right. You could tell that he's just, you know, your middle of the line man. And this snake tattoo is just, you know, unless a thousand people have got snake tattoos, which, you know, they might, there may be a cult, who knows. But <laughs> this guy has got a, a snake like tattoo on the back of his neck. He got no fingers, have he? No, they kind of like, yeah, but they, they've kind of 
the skin here where he's curled over has like grown in and it's like melded to like a, a stump. <laughs> like, uh, wanted one for oh, you, yeah, you're gonna cut one off the necklace. Cut off a year, an ear. Yeah. I wanted a necklace of fingers. Tum- I just said I wanted a necklace of fingers. Todger. <laughs> Todger. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what that is. Fish penis. Ah. <laughs> Thank you for. Fish fingers. <laughs> just cut off the whole stump. <laughs> it's but you could probably like pry one away with enough like cutting. Fish, fish sticks. Uh, make a medicine check. Uno momento. Quickly, we, we, the we fucking killed the dude. Bard! <laughs> He's in a window going. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if people... 21. If I hold my hands there, yeah, people can see that. 21. Sure. <laughs> um, 21, yeah. you. One of the fingers is... like It's his little finger on his right hand. It's like the least attached to the stump. It's still like corrupted and purple looking and like... There's a lot of congealed blood around her and stuff. But you manage to carve it up away from the, the palm and cut it off. But it stinks. But you can wear on your necklace if you want. If you're going to commit to the finger necklace, you have to commit to the finger necklace. Yeah, but I don't want to smell. Um, well, you could, you could. I mean, they, they're going to be rotting fingers. They're going to smell regardless. Bless you. Thank you. you Whether could, it smells you like could, fish now or not. You could embalm it. True. Yeah. Piss on it. <laughs> Neutralize it. <laughs> it's just the bard in the window shouting suggestions. <laughs> <laughs> Back off! <laughs> okay, people are starting to come back out of the... I start aiming my hand at him. <laughs> Do you want to turn the battle cam off? Ooh. Battle cam! With my handy Delectics. dandy uh, stream deck. There we go. So, yeah, people are starting to peek out of doorways and stuff now and, like, there are a few bodies down the street where this guy is clearly... Well, not necessarily bodies, but people that have been knocked over by him and are injured, at least. Oh, so wait. they. Hmm? Sorry, we wouldn't know what type of zombie was, only Chris wouldn't no. he? Um, he doesn't even specifically know the type of yeah, zombie. But would me and Gert know that he's a zombie, or will we have to ask Chris? Um, Balf. You can make a nature check, or you can ask Balf. Okay. I'm just going to kind of, like, come up next The to people Balf. that have been hit by him are immediately picked up by guards. Because the guards are on their way anyway, it's just you arrived at the scene first. Um, the much more lax um, guard presence now, in some cases, is proving to be a problem because they can't get to these things in time. Because, yeah. to be fair, that only lasted like 24 seconds or something. Um, but, you know, the the lack of guards is proving to be a problem. But they immediately pick up those that have been bitten or hit and just drag them away, assuming they're infected. Mm. Uh, a guard comes up to you and goes, You! You got knocked down, you got hit. Are you okay? Do you I'm, feel okay? I'm fine. Let me see your wound. I, Show me your arm. Yeah, I, I roll up my sleeve. Okay. The, there is clearly like a, a mark, mm. but he, he studies it, he like pokes around a bit, it's a bit sore, but he's like, Well, there doesn't seem to be immediate rot. Tavern rot sets in fast. Yeah, I, it's, I'm fine. Right. Well, keep an eye on it. If it gets any worse, go see a healer. Immediately. Go straight up to the monastery. You will be uh, administered uh, some sort of salve, maybe, by a friar. Failing that, go to uh, uh, Jezeline's Oil Emporium. Uh, Longest standing shop in Charpaya. She will cure that. Have we still got all of our stuff from before? Yeah, why? Okay. Oh, you still got the hand cream. <laughs> it's like, what was it? What, what did I have? I had something. It was, it was like, literally just like an aloe based hand cream. That's the yeah. same oil emporium. It is, yeah. Jesseline's oil emporium. 900 years old. Yeah. And it was standing a lot longer than you were there. Bloody hell. Where's my stuff? <laughs> Equipment. Fucking crikey. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he goes, well, yeah. any sort of strange pangs or if it gets green or brown or yellow or any other strange color go straight to a healer yes it's purple with tavern rot sorry right uh, purple then i am sure that it will look fucking strange on your skin anyway the red and the purple terrible clash <laughs> i mean if you didn't trick me with pies earlier on you could have had some of my i look down at all the purple i'm wearing and i'm like fuck you then 
<laughs> he, he just walks away in with like a purpose to his step and goes and helps like the clean up and people start just he's shouting like go back about your day and people start you know coming nervously back out into the street there's some people looking over into the river because he clearly came up from the river mm. but um yeah the the body is being dragged away and disposed of no don't we we need him please uh, okay. What, what, what do you mean you need him? Um, we 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 got a thing to say that he's wanted, dead or alive, and we'd like to get some gold. Let me see that. He takes it and he goes, "Oh, this was the necromancer's assistant." Yeah, I mean, if there's one guy who's gonna get some sort of zombie rot, it's gonna be a fucking necromancer's assistant. So, yeah, it doesn't really say much on the on the flyer, but you know. We, it's been a problem for the last few days, you know? Uh, but, who knows? Maybe this guy is him. And he s- flips around and sees, like it says about the snake, snake-like snake tattoo, and he checks the body, and he's like, well, you can mark it off. Uh, I mean, hold on. And he, he just pulls out a little like knife and scrapes all the skin away, and it's like rotten and gross. But it's got the tattoo, and he goes, here you go. Yeah, okay, thanks. Here you go, Bazaar. You can hold this. <laughs> I'm holding the book. Douses his hands I'll in hold holy the book. water first. <laughs> yeah. Y- y- uh, you hold this, because... Y- and then he goes, I gotta go know. wash my hands. You better wash your hands after it. And he just, like, hands it off to you. <laughs> you. <laughs> Yay! You were, you were poisoned. You, you got an immunity or something. I'll you just hold it. it and, and Yeah, okay, you're great. still not feeling particularly well, by the way. There's still, like, a yeah. an unsettling... Like, it's this, you're in the stage of don't trust a burp. <laughs> yes. Yes. Ew. Yeah. Because um, it'll have a follow through. I just keep talking to the guards, and uh, so um, is this kind of zombie thing like? I'm on my way back to the town hall. Okay, to okay never but, mind. But I mean, we've had a problem at Tavern Rot before. It's not the first time. I'm not gonna lie. We had a bit of an outbreak. Uh, I don't know, maybe like forty odd years ago, fifty years ago, maybe. Um, it was before I was a guard. I was. Uh, I was actually just like a, a doorman back then because he's an elf, but he's surprisingly like barely for an elf. Like you always assume elves to be like sleek and slender and tall and majestic. This guy is just and like Stewie bloke. Griffin. <laughs> yeah, no, but this guy is yeah. <laughs> this guy is just blokey bloke. Um, bloke, bloke, bloke. Oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so is this kind of like the first? Um, incident you've seen uh yeah which is actually kind of worrying um i suppose we better go check all the ale again uh, you might want to look in a tavern rot and uh why it's called what it is and stuff i don't have the time right now but there's a library just kind of like across the way uh-huh. i would go look it up uh-huh. clue, okay. your, clue yourself up on that shit okay and he goes, I, I got business with tempo I, I gotta go thank you and he just goes and helps with the cleanup again so all the guards have sort of gone back about the day you know essentially drag this corpse away minus the tattoo uh, <laughs> marching through you're not even like hiding it's just <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm gonna i want my gold uh yeah. cha <laughs> where, where did bizarre go i don't know i'm guessing he went to the know. town hall i don't know <laughs> do you know the way <laughs> do you know the way brother just like that. Why are you running? <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh. I think we should just go to the town hall. I think that's where he would have gone. Because that's where we had that fire from. So I'm guessing that's where he's run off to. You coming? Mm-hmm. Okay, so you, yeah, you just follow after him to the town hall. Up, um, in the temple quarter. Kind of on like the, the lower plinth. And... um by the time you arrive you've already like handed <laughs> you're just standing there with this like freshly cut rotten skin on the table that's a tattoo just kind of looking at the guy <laughs> <laughs> he's there just like uh it's sufficient i mean it did say he had a snake like tattoo um i suppose you got that from somewhere what so... was the name of uh the necromancer's assistant. Necromancer's assistant. Oh, is that what this contract was? 
I'm I'm not very clued up on this stuff. I just hand them out. Honestly, there's sort of above my pay grade. I'm sorry. Okay, well, you might find out that the necromancer's assistant's name is Tomac. Uh, and if you're we found to Tomac out. Ed Gear, he was a very strange boy, very troubled youth. That was a name we found when we were looking around. That's all. Oh. We're pretty sure this is the guy. And he just looks and he goes, "Well, proof is proof, but I don't want it here. So please take it with you, along with your gold." And he just hands you the the three gold because of the dead um, category of the the bounty. <laughs> I'll I will take it out. And as soon as I get out into the street, I'll just drop it on the floor. <laughs> just like a, a pile of skin. I thought you meant the goal then. I was like, why? <laughs> yeah, before you can even blink, there are just like 18 peasant children that crawl out of the gutters and like run like crabs and <laughs> steal and run away. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, the skin just flops into a pile on the floor. So we'll be by the town hall now. Yeah, you, yeah. You, like as you kind of arrive, he's walking back out and just goes... So did you get the gold? He didn't have any. He didn't have any. No, I got it right here. Well, cough up. How much? <laughs> how much was it at all? Three. Gold. Three. Yeah. It was actually three gold, even with five people, but it's just more convenient this way. <laughs> yeah, we'll share this out then, and just one gold each. You want the gold each? My thanks. I'll just be a moment. I'm just popping into the town hall a second. Stay right here. And just Walking. march through the door <laughs> just uh yes can i help you hi um i'm just double checking is there any pie here pie <laughs> doesn't believe me why would there be pie at well, the town hall this is not a bakery i know but i heard this guy shouting earlier on saying there was free pie in the town hall i'm just double well, checking i'm not sure what delusional buffoon you heard but there's no pie here Okay, great. That that's fine. Okay, thanks. And I just walk straight back out. <laughs> As you leave in, you can just see under his breath. God, I do not get paid enough. <laughs> 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 uh. <laughs> so yeah, you've dropped the skin on the floor. You've divvied out the gold. You're just kind of standing outside the town hall now. Pub. No, not pub. <laughs> Rapids. We gotta go find that necromancer. We gotta know what's been going on. Pub. And then I head towards the pub. <sighs> I love how every D and D player's like instinct is just finish mission, go to tavern. Yeah. <laughs> have drink, have food. Very good. By this point, you're still only like, uh, it's not even midday yet. So. Well, midnight day. Yeah. Midday night. I mean, you good? I've got to be. Don't do that. <laughs> I mean, if you want to go to the tavern so bad, then I guess. Because I ain't going to that necromancer on my own. Even with Cha. It, 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 we Let's need get someone. A drink. We need to stick Let's to Let's form a plan. Please, please, can we go to Francis's one? Yeah, I don't like those sticky floors. That's fine. Right, so just head back to pub. Mm -hmm. Right, um, rather uneventful. Um, Is there journey. like a river or anything? Like, would we be walking al alongside You'd the river at any point? Travel across a bridge to, because from Deacon's Bridge back to the Kindle Ward, you have to go across the bridge into Temple Quarter. In, oh no, wait, you're in the Temple Quarter. Um, you'd be r walking alongside the river the whole time at least. Book sploosh. Oh my god, yeah. what are you doing? <laughs> There's uh, all the people's stuff in there! God, everyone in this city is fucking blind, man. No one sees you do it, no one hears you do it. Okay. Except maybe Bob, who you can now see like coming up the river, just kind of like kicking really fucking hard on his little oar, like upriver. <laughs> Bob! Bob! Can you get that <laughs> book like... out of the water? Bazaar dropped it! He goes, can't hear you. Sorry. He's like, I'll, I'll meet you at the pub. He's like kicking his legs. <laughs> oh god. Yeah, that book is ruined now. It's like sodden through. 
<laughs> I mean, I could have carried it for you. We... We didn't need it anymore. Yeah, but... People are not gonna know people's addresses and stuff now. <laughs> the guy at the post office at this exact time is just like this... Like, telepathic ping, and he's like... The book. <laughs> Turns around, he's gone, he's like... The book! <laughs> <laughs> I'll teach him to take backups. <laughs> Remember, kids, back up your hard drives. <laughs> that reminds me I need to Two on site, one off site. Oh my god. I need to fucking back mine up. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, you head back to the headless high drive, no um, worries. And you walk in, and Francis is in, and he's like, Back so soon, are we? You look rough. You need a drink. We found Tomac. Oh, you found Tomac? How's he doing? Well, I suppose you either took him into prison or he's dead. Uh, you familiar with Tavern Rot? And it, like, <laughs> he does the thing where he kind of like spits on the floor, does this, like, turns around and goes, Ugh, that fucking thing. You think I could get anyone to come in my pub after that? Jesus. No, not Jesus. He doesn't exist. God's above. <laughs> Tavern Rot's a bastard nightmare do you guys even know what it is aye alright then smart ass humour me make a um, medicine check oh one point of advantage natural 20 ok um, do you want to know what that is in all or however um Tavern Rot never really existed during your time, but from what you've picked up, you can confidently just, oh, you kind of okay. boast him, you're like, well, it turns you into a fish man, and it's, you know, this, that, and you basically use so your I, general... So I fly by the seat of my pants? Yeah, you basically okay. quote everything you know to do with basic zombifying diseases, and he's like... And what right, I just encountered. I'll give you that, but did you even know, did you, <clears throat> do you know where it came from? Yeah, see, I got you there, smart man. <laughs> and then you can hear the voice out the back, just kind of going, <sighs> and he's like, yeah, we know you had a hard time doing in the tavern rot days, but no one cares. Shut up. I'm speaking, man. I start signaling past Francis to just him to get the ale. <laughs> <laughs> you can just hear, <laughs> he runs off and just a <laughs> <laughs> brings it back and pops it up. Was it eight copper? Was it? Was uh, I think it was six copper, but if, if you want to go with eight... No, it was eight. It was the eight, was it? The brown ale has been eight. Oh, yeah. The six was the food. Oh. Before before you drink, where did it come from? Well, the thing is, we don't know the true origin. However, it did come from around this part of the world, you know. Uh, we believe it may have come from Wyvern Hollow. However, there was a, a wizard, a powerful wizard... Her necromancer, about, oh, I don't know, maybe 80 years. I'm losing track of time, you know, old dwarf and all. You get it. Uh, I'm not saying you're old, I'm just saying you're a dwarf and, you know, we have a longer, like, uh, I'm digging a hole. Uh, and mm-hmm. it's rumoured, at least, that... When you say dwarf and digging a hole, I kind of like, huh? I am a dwarf and digging a hole, diggy, diggy hole. Um, and we turned on the bards. Um, <laughs> shut but up, it, you bastard! There's more of them! <laughs> Why is there four of you now? We only have three instruments! What are you doing? <laughs> they, they're all the same guy. <laughs> <laughs> Dot blast! Like dwarf blender, but. But yeah, he goes. Well, that, it said that the necromancer poisoned the local supply. By selling off a, a new vat of ale of sorts. And it was not a bad ale, for according to the legend. I did not myself try it, for within a few days of this ale being distributed I'm among... Like, mm. yeah, uh, luckily not that one, <laughs> but people were dropping dead in the streets and reanimating. And when they did, huge teeth protruded from their face and caused their skin to rip. Their eyes turned almost... Bug like, fish like, and there was a horrendous stench of fish. 
And people just sort of... I don't know, became... Zombies, I suppose. Tavern rot zombies, but they were known as. But... That's exactly what we encountered today. They're back. Shit. And he goes, Barnabas, check the supply. And he just goes, hey. <laughs> You can hear like... <laughs> running away from it. <laughs> and he, you can hear like a... Boom, as a door slams at the back, as if he's like checking the cellar or something. Mm. And he's like, Oh, dark days ahead for me again then. I owned this business during the first lot of... The real outbreak of Tavern Rot. Because... It was isolated about maybe 80 years ago, but about 40 or 50 years ago, there was a real, you know, flurry of it, in Charpire at least, and a great, great fell, great fall, what's the city called? Great fall. <laughs> Sorry, my old woven mind is a bit, dement- uh, a bit dementia, you know. <laughs> but aye, hey, there was a nasty outbreak in this area about 40, 50, maybe about 45 years ago then. And, yeah, people were literally being killed in the streets, which is kind of why so many people are now desensitised to zombies and stuff. Like, especially the peasant folk out near the walls, they they suffered it really bad, because it was a very cheap ale, and it's all they could really afford to drown their sorrows, you know? So a lot of them ended up having to kill their own children and wives that had turned into these horrendous fish zombies. Oh, God. And... Now that you say about Tomac and the snake-like tattoo, to you, did it look like a snake or an eel? Make um, make a religion check, actually. That was... I know that's a weird one for just like a snake thing, but it'll tie in eventually. Religion... 22? 22. Is um, national 19. When he says eel, or like a, an eel-like creature, it like triggers a thought, and you're like, actually, actually I vaguely remember reading up about like a, almost like a following, like a cult for this eel, like, like serpent lord um, that often practiced necromancy and stuff and it, it like triggers a thought but you don't know and the link to the the tavern rot zombies but you do have this the moment he says eel there's like this idea of a an old serpent lord you read about so he goes hey i see i've i've rung a bell in your head hi well i don't know much about it myself i'm not a particularly well-read man but i just hope tavern rot gets snipped in the bud you know Let's hope Tomac, if it even was him, was the only one. Did he bite anyone? I, I honestly, I, I don't know if I got there on time. Did the guards at least contain people who had been? He definitely, attacked? he definitely scratched people. It's not usually the scratch too much that gets them. It's more. Actually, I don't know what it is. Maybe the scratch, maybe the bite. It tends to be if they they cause so much, I don't know, maybe it's blood. And you can see him like looking confused. He's like, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not a physician. I don't know how this stuff spreads. All I know is if he bit you or if he scratched you or anything, you might. <laughs> I roll up my sleeve and I'm like, well, this hurt like hell. Hmm. You might want to get that checked by a priest. I feel fine. Is uh, that, I think you should call. If you take a turn in the, within the next 24 hours, I would 100% go and see a priest. Because that shit will turn you quicker than you can blink, boy. You'll drop and you'll reanimate. I don't know how it works. Be it magic or... I don't know. Physicality? I, I do not know. All I know is it'll ruin your life and those around you's life. Because you'll probably eat their face. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of eating faces, did, did his mouth look... All sore and ripped. Oh, torn to shreds. Definitely sounds like tavern rock to me. <sighs> Dark days ahead, and you can hear the door in the back, and, like, and then you just go. Rrr. It seems fine. Yeah. All right. <sighs> it, it had a distinctive smell that ale. I can't describe it. It. It's almost like the smell of salt and the sea. 
maybe? Like a sea foam or a sea air? So it doesn't get in the water again, because that was a bastard nightmare. The, the entire... Uh, hold on, what's the world name? Sorry. The entirety of Ashearth was pretty much reduced to... Well, maybe one person per average household, because it got into the water supply somehow. Mm. Luckily, we all drink from isolated wells, but, you know, so it's not the water supply. Balthazar is actually writing this down in his okay. notebook as well. I, I would, um, I'd probably, I don't know if there's much else you can even find on it. Maybe there's a history book, like a, a recent history book somewhere that may describe in more detail about the actual outbreak, but I don't know. But I seem to trigger something when I said about a serpent or a... An eel. Is there a library anywhere nearby that doesn't have a tiny, slow old woman in it? Pretty much every library's got a slow old woman in it. However, uh, I would not go to Charpire City Library. That place is a pile of crap. You'll never find anything you fucking want in there, I'll tell you that much. Good to know. Um, the one that is called... Hold on. If you really want to find some good books... You need to go to the, the Chronicles of the Archbishop up near the, the temple. And I've also heard uh, of a subterranean library under the uh, like the temple at the top. I don't know anything about it, but people have said that for years that the monks have kept records under the temple. Maybe they have some more recent history, but i definitely check the Chronicles of the Archbishop. Maybe they'll have something about it. I'd read up on maybe that in general. Because this, this whole dark time has been one weird thing where we've all had to learn how to defend against a zombie attack or how to kill a ghost and effectively exorcise a child. It's, it's been a wild one, I'll tell you that much. Everything he's saying there is just bringing back memories. Like, yeah. oh, Christ. I was born in the darkness. I didn't mean to quote Bane. Um, <laughs> but my, uh, my granddad growing up, he remembers the time of the light, and he said it was beautiful. It was. He described sunlight. <laughs> what? I mean, it. I'm sure it was. Hey, hey. Right. Sorry. Uh, and he kept getting rubs his ears. I missed the first bit. But he described the sunlight. He described what it feels like to have the warmth on your skin, you know. And even as a dwarf, who, you know, my ancestors came from under the ground can't help but be jealous of the man for just knowing what it was like and this new thing this fucking moon what's that about that that blew my mind i had to i had to check i didn't drink too much to be honest there's no warmth from it though it's very cold very cold light you know if you want to get oh. some warmth you should really start out that draft upstairs are you still on about that fucking draft all right i'll get on it don't worry about jesus I keep saying Jesus. He doesn't exist in this world. He's, <laughs> a, dru above. He's a druid. Yeah. <laughs> Hanging out with Kevin Bacon and Pocahontas. <laughs> yeah. Hey, so... Excellent druids. Anyway, uh, I'm afraid that's as much as I know on the, the matter at hand. I'm going to go and ponder sunlight some more. I think about it often. Anything I can get you anyways. Other than perhaps another round. Aye. Half price because of the, the injury and all. You've suffered today, my friend. Thank you. Anyone else? Can I offer you a drink? Just a water, please. Did either of you two get attacked? No. Oh, that's good. It's because we're badass. To be fair, not many teeth are going to get through that armour. Yeah. You, on the other hand, they may catch. You just look a bit nimble. So I keep a help. I can't, I can't remember it. Don't worry, yeah. Russian words. Uh-huh. Right, anyway. Um, I need to back. Barnabas! Another one on the... I was going to say on the house, but I said half price. And I'm going to stick to what I said. Only because this is an expensive ale. You can have a cheaper drink on the house. No, I'm fine. All right, half price! And he's like... <laughs> <laughs> He just hands it over to you and he goes, well, that'll be four copper then. Uh, have you got much planned for the rest of your day? You know, it's still only... 
We were gonna do some uh, shopping and then go swimming and visit family. No, nothing. Oh, that sounded nice actually. Yeah, we could go I shopping. Wish. We could go shopping. Arrows. Oh yeah, you didn't get none. Uh, arrows. Yes. What you? Do you have some or do you want some? I just want some. Well, you have some. I need more. Right, fair. Anyway, I, I better get about my business because. Oh, I'm gonna go nuts on the tree this time. There's, <laughs> there's a few other patrons in the bar, so he just goes over and like tends their tables and stuff. So. Barkeep. Hey. Do you know of uh, Fletcher? Or. I mean, you could probably check the artisans hall down near Deacon's Bridge. That's what the other guy said. Oh, wait, no, I wasn't there. Yeah, to, you went there. To, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, oh! <laughs> I was just in Deacon's Bridge! <laughs> Flame. I was just there! Yeah. Are you alright, love? <laughs> <laughs> you look a bit warm. Like, obviously, you wouldn't know what I mean because you've never seen Hercules or Disney, the Disney oh. version of it. But, like. Oh, when uh, Hades' head. When Hades' head yeah, just, know. like, flames. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not a complete idiot just ago. Um, well, <laughs> but yeah, so he just goes about turning tables and he goes, Hey, uh, when you finish with them drinks, just pop the mugs up on the bar, yeah? By the way, um, you're already poisoned, so basically, this is just prolonging the poison, yeah. That's so, fine. you know, it, it's, it was wearing off, but now you've slammed to it like the, the stronger stuff, mm. not the strongest ale they have, that shit's basically just like spicy potato water mm. but um and by that I mean just vodka um but spicy <laughs> potato but um yeah the that More stuff will you. keep you tipsy for another half hour or so hour yeah maybe. that's fine anyway about my day I just carries on so unless you have any qualms I'd say we leave it there yeah that sounds yeah. good yeah sounds good what time good is it in the world in the world, it's like around roughly about. midday. Okay. It's very hard to tell unless you go and see the dedicated. There's like basically um, up at the temple. There's like a dedicated wizard that's kind of you know the the speaking clock that you could use the phone in. Well, mm. you can still do it, and it tells you the exact time. There's one like little old bored man who just kind of like brings up a clock and then puts it away again, and then someone else comes up and goes, "What's the time?" And he just goes, <laughs> "Clock." <laughs> You think they would just like leave it up? So, yeah, create a permanent one somehow. But it's nine hundred years people and they still be on them. jobs for people. Let's be honest. I think I got hiccups. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say it's been nine hundred years and they're still not accustomed to this darkness thing. I so, mean, hmm? I mean, that's, it's pretty hard to get accustomed to. Yeah. 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 Right. So we have been Boogie Mustache. We've been playing Dungeons and Dragons. This is the Tears of Sunlight campaign, episode two. Uh, we will upload it to YouTube uh, sometime next week. If you missed any of the earlier bits, the previous episodes are already up. Uh, some episodes before that that were like a prequel and some one shots are up. We have other gaming stuff too. Yep. Um, I don't know if there's any other streams going on this week. I know you've been streaming Overwatch a bit recently. Yeah, I'm do. I'm gonna do a solo. Uh, Sekiro's stream this week at some point when I find time. Okay. Like if you go to our Discord down below, it'll notify you. Yes. Join our Discord. It will be awesome. Yeah. I need to stop leaning because I'm like right over this section of the... the there we go. Yeah. Right, so yeah. Thank you very much. Join us next week, uh, Thursday at 7pm. Uh, that'll probably be the time we go live all the time yeah. unless specified otherwise. Thank you very much for joining us. I dropped my dog. Christopher, hit the button! <laughs>